game after this. Winter has come to the heartland on a gray, cold day in Manhattan, Kansas. We're getting ready for a good one out of the Big 12 as Colorado takes on number eight, Kansas State. Hi and welcome everybody along with Tim Brandt. I'm Terry Gannon. Colorado comes in needing a win to be eligible for a bowl game. Kansas State hopes to make the alliance party, and Timmy, they've been getting it done on the magic of their quarterback, Michael Bishop. No question about it, Terry. I'm excited to see Michael Bishop play again. He's a phenomenal athlete. Great runner, strong arm. The guy just does not lose. He won two national championships without a loss in junior college. Now at Kansas State, his only loss is to Nebraska. Still has hopes of that alliance bowl, so today is a must-win situation. Colorado's quarterback is John Hessler. He's been inconsistent at times, but he had his greatest moment in this stadium two years ago, coming from behind to win. He needs early success to build his confidence today, but he could be the difference in this ball game. For more on Colorado's defense, let's go down on the field. Here's Lewis Johnson. Timmy, there has been a lot of discussion this week about the return of Colorado linebacker Ron Murkison. You know he's been out since the third game of the season with torn up ligaments in his right knee. He is the leader of the Colorado defense, and without him, they've really struggled. Now, during pregame warm-ups, I saw him warm up. He looked pretty good. He had good forward and backward movements. Lateral movements were okay. But if you ask me, I don't think he's quite 100%. But that's fine, though, Lewis. It's a psychological thing for the entire defense. I think Rick Neuheisel knew, knows the defense needs a spark. He's the guy that can do it. He also knows the packages, can make some calls, run some blitzes. It's important that he's willing to play and has the ability physically to get in the ball game and play some today with that defense. Offensively, Colorado's been much better in the last four games, but they've got to stay away from the turnover. Now, Kansas State won the toss. They defer to the second half. There is a brisk wind out of the north, and the wind chill is going to get to about 15 or 20. That is it. And don't miss any of the kickoffs. Whatever you do, you've got the top two return men and teams in the country. Number one, Ben Kelly, the top man in the nation. Almost 35 yards per return. He's back there along with Damon Wheeler. Both teams have great special teams, and of course, field position in a game like this, always important. They tell us it's 33 degrees. I don't believe them. It feels like it's in single digits. Snow flurries in the forecast. So Jamie Ream gets us underway here in Manhattan. Ben Kelly, two yards deep. He's going to bring it out. Got a wedge in front of him. Got a seat across the 30 to midfield. And finally brought down at the 49 of Kansas State. You get a look at the best return man in all of college football. To be a great return man, you need several things. Number one, first and foremost, is speed. Then you need vision. You need a lot of guts, too. No question what he was going to do. He was bringing it out. Now he's patient, sees the seam. Now he burst into that second explosion. Look at this. He's looking for help now, looking for a blocker. But by stumbling there for a second, he allowed the tackler, Niesman, to get up and make that stop. And Gerald Niesman is the second best return man in all of college football. Had a 99-yarder last week against Kansas. He made the tackle. Rochelle Shell Troutman trying the right side. Got a lane and a good gain on first down. Out to the 43-yard line of Kansas State. Take a look at the Chili starting lineup and this offensive line for Colorado banged up because of those injuries. Well starting at center. Cook goes to tackle. Bill Savoy is back after missing last week's game with a shoulder injury that bothered him all season long. And in the backfield, you've got Troutman as well as John Hessler, who has played better in the last four games, but he's got to stay away from the mistakes. Even last week against Iowa State, had an interception go all the way back 94 yards and a fumble on a pitch. But here he connects. It's complete to Marcus Figgers. A big game inside the 25 all the way down to the 19-yard line. And what about this Colorado offense right out of the gate, Timmy? Well, it's an offense that loves to throw. They throw a great deal. They like to use that to set up the run, and they're going against the freshman here. This guy is Carter. He's been on the corner, and he's the guy they've been picking on and will throughout the day. Good move. Go right by 35, Carter. Now, you're going to see Colorado now use that pass effectively, but they're going to go after this freshman quite a bit. They have the last several games tried to pick a weak spot. Coming in, this was the one they thought would work. And a double tight end set right now. Desmond Dennis is at tight end for the Buffalo. The gifts straight ahead to Herschel Troutman. 
And if Bill gets about two, that is it. He goes against the defense in Kansas State that has traditionally, over the last four or five years, been one of the best in the country. Darren Howard, a young sophomore, but they love him here. He is so talented, puts a lot of pressure on the quarterback. And this may be one of the most unheralded, but one of the best linebacking cores in the entire country. The secondary, though, today will be tested. You've got a couple of redshirt freshmen back there. Troutman picked up about three on first down. So the second and seven at the 16. Troutman again looking for a lane, but Travis Oaks closes quickly and brings him down. You know, Colorado's gotten off the shaky starts the last several ball games, especially last week. They had to come from behind again and win. Here is a very good drive, but now they're faced with third down and short. It's going to be critical that they pick up the first down here. Right now, Rick Neuheisel and the Buffaloes want to get a touchdown, obviously, and not the field goal. If they can do that. We'll see how they react with the lead over a top-ranked team like Kansas State. Neuheisel, 25 at 8 his first two seasons. Different year this year, though. Severini in motion to the far side. Wayne Charlton, the lone setback. Throw off to Severini, and he can't pick it up. It was a little bit behind him, and he would have been close to the first down if he would have caught that. A little bit behind him and a little bit low. Skipped it out to him. He was open. He had, he had enough for the first down. Hessler just had to put that ball there, and they'll have to settle for three. And there's a look at Rick Neuheisel talking to his quarterback, and they've done a lot of that this year on the sideline. Obviously under the gun all season. Not the season Hessler had hoped for. Here's Jeremy Aldrich trying to put the first point on the board. 29-yard field goal try. Plenty of distance, and it is good. So the Buffaloes off the long return by Ben Kelly, 52 yards after bringing it back against Kansas State. That sets up the opening field goal, and it is 3 to nothing in Manhattan. Opening drive successful for the Buffaloes. They get on the board with a 29-yard field goal and lead it 3 nothing. Much of that due to the return of Ben Kelly. And here's a look at Gerald Neesman, the number two return man in the entire country. This is what he's done this year. And it's two explosive teams in terms of returns, not only kickoff, but punting as well. Neesman also made the uh, critical tackle on uh -huh. a big return by Kelly. So Aldridge will pooch it. A high, short kick trying to keep it away from Neesman. And it's taken at the 34-yard line. Smart play to avoid the return, knowing that if they push it high, it'll be a fair catch, which it was. Chile's starting lineups, and this is a huge offensive line. This is the biggest one in college football, bigger than almost everyone in the NFL, as a matter of fact. The wideout struggled early, but Fariz and McDonald have played much better as of late. And the backfield, Eric Hickson, the number one rusher, but Michael Bishop is not far behind. And this guy, every time he touches the football, you look for something spectacular to happen. Yeah, offensively, K-State gives you uh, a threat of the option. They give you a moderate passing game, but Bishop is always a threat no matter what he does. So it's first down at the 35. And it's Mike Lawrence this time, looking for a lane, getting up to about the 38-yard line. You've got Lawrence and Hickson, two pretty good backs. Hickson coming back off that leg injury a year ago. This is the defensive front that they will face. And Rick Newhouse really challenged this squad last game. Billy Malmau at his best game of the year against Iowa State. Hannibal Navies with 4-4 four, four speed in the 40s. Got great speed, Ty Gregrick, a true freshman. And, of course, Murkerson in there. You heard Lewis Johnson's report and a secondary for Colorado. So not only do you get maybe your best defensive player back on the field, but a leader. That's a huge lift for this defense. Mike Lawrence, tough running straight ahead for about a yard for the first time this afternoon. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. A busy day in college football, John. Indeed, Terry, in Washington in the Pac-10, the only team that controls its own destiny. Beat UCLA and Washington State, they go to the Rose Bowl. Maurice Shaw in for Rashawn Sheehy, who's injured, takes off and takes it to the end zone, and Washington strikes first against UCLA. They lead 7-0. Terry. All right, John, a good one out in the Pac-10. A lot of football left to be played before all the bowl picture is clear. Bishop. Throws. This time has to inside the 35 down to the 32 yard line before he's knocked out. 
That's Justin Swift, the tight end who makes the catch and a gain of 29. Everybody was accounted for except the tight end. They came on a blitz, running a two deep five under. Now watch, he just goes across on a little drag pattern all the way across, and he's big. 6'3", 250 pounds. That's his 11th reception of the year, but watch. They come over, two guys to knock him out of bounds. Here's a guy that was 265 pounds in the cotton bowl. He's now thinner and a lot quicker, but they just dragged him across, and nobody picked him up. Well, ten catches coming in, third leading receiver on this Kansas State team. Now, Gangwish now in at fullback. And it's Mike Lawrence. Good, I've got a big hole. That's outside and down to the 20-yard line. That offensive line just moving the defense in front of Colorado. Same thing every game for the Colorado defense. They'll hold you defensively, then they'll give up a big play. I mean, Iowa State got most of its yardage last week on just a few big plays. The defense needs more consistency. They come on a blitz, the linebacker frees up the tight end. Bingo, there's a big one. Then they, they lay soft, and they run the running back at them. They're playing on their heels a little bit, but then they'll get tough again. They've got to get more consistent. There goes Bishop. Most of the time when he runs, it's a called play. Gets inside the 20, got a first down at the 17-yard line. This is the guy who... Every time he drops back, he is so dangerous. And he told us yesterday, most of the time when he runs, it, it, it's something from the sideline. Now, this was an, a called draw before it even developed. Now, number one, Ben Kelly will knock him out of bounds. Watch this. Then after the play, the two of them had words. Now, Kelly's not a big guy. He's only 5'9 and a half, 170 pounds. And Bishop, 6'1", and he's over 200 pounds. Those two going face-to-face -face on the way back to the huddle. A little trash talking going on. Michael Bishop is a Texas guy. This has got to be the coldest game he's ever played in. Kareem's in motion to the near sideline. There goes Warren. Breaking outside. He's got Green. There's a flag down. Run out of bounds at the 11-yard line. And there are two flags down now. One back at the 17 behind the line of scrimmage and one right at the point of tackle. Well, the first flag, I think, is going to be holding. It's going to be holding against Gangwish and Martin. On the offense, first pass on the defense. The penalties will all set. We play first down. So the offsetting penalties, Hale Dowden letting us know that they'll replay the down. Now, what a job that Bill Snyder has done. Maybe as good as any when you look at college football, the turnarounds. He came in here, and there was just no sense of pride or of winning at all in Manhattan. And now he's got him number eight in the country and maybe their best year yet. Chance to get into an alliance bowl. So it's first and ten at the 17 yard line. Ganglish and Lawrence with the offset on. Bishop the gift to Lawrence. The offensive line trying to push the defensive front again. A game of about three down inside the 15. Mike Lawrence averages over five yards to carry. Very dangerous running back. Also a wide receiver, and they'll split him. 5'10, 200 yards, uh, 200 pounds senior. Look at this. Third all-time career rushing yards. He's 116 to become the all-time leading rusher in K-State history. A quick feet, nice moves. He's really accepted his role this year, too. Once again, Eric Hickson coming back off the leg injury, and they've split time at the tailback spot. Second and eight out of the shotgun. Bishop to run. Watch out. Right at the 14, though. they got to get all the way down to the seven-yard line for a first down. Colorado will blitz almost every play. I mean, it seems as if they're blitzing every play. Now, if you watch this, here comes Gregorak. Gregorak now number 35 right up the middle and overruns the play. But they're going to bring somebody, whether it's a zone blitz, a run blitz, a pass blitz, or coming off the corner, they're going to do it. Gregorak that time, he just overran the play. A.J. Kristoff. The defensive coordinator said Ty Gregorak has picked things up better than anybody and quicker than anybody he's ever had. First true fresh for the start of middle linebacker since 1991 at CU. Third down pass. He lifts and he makes the catch at the 10 now. Bishop threw it behind him. Couldn't get his footing to make the catch, but he's well short of the first down anyway. Boy, he moved so well for a big guy. This ball is not really well thrown by Bishop. He felt the pressure coming to the back side. But look at Swift. It was the ground that just knocked it loose in the last second because he had it cuddled in there. Well, Michael Bishop 
has been taken out of a couple of games and benched this year, but uh, at this point playing with a lot of confidence. And here is Martin Gramatica, one of the three finalists for the Grozo Award, the best kicker in all of college football. That award going to a 29-yard field goal try, and we are tied at three. Shows as much emotion as any kicker in the country, too. Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Comp USA, the computer superstore, Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth, the legendary Firebird Trans Am from Pontiac, and State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. A pair of 29-yard field goals, and we are tied at three early on. A lot of pressure on that freshman right there, Dyshad Carter. Colorado wants to throw at him. Number one pass defense in the Big 12, but it really hasn't been tested. Ben Kelly brought it back 53 yards the first time. Here's Daniel Wheeler going to try to bring it out. Stumbles and falls across the 20 out to the 22-yard line. So Kansas State, at least right now, electing to go ahead and kick off deep, even though you've got Ben Kelly and Wheeler at the goal line awaiting them. Colorado throws 30 times a game and will test this secondary, which I said has not really been tested. Now, obviously Kansas State has allowed only two touchdown passes all year, but they defended only 161 passes, and this guy right here, Hessler, has completed almost that many himself. They think they have a weak spot. They were successful in the first drive. We'll see if they do it here. And even though he's thrown 13 interceptions on the year and he's made some mistakes, you know the guy's got a gun. You know he can explode. He's done it in the past. Here's your matchup. Play action. A lot of time for Hetzler going deep over the middle. No one there. Intended for Cheverini, but he was well covered by Dimitri Denmark. Step for step with Darren Cheverini, the leading receiver on the Buffalo squad. Savoy, big target, 6'3", 200 pounds. He's the one that was matched up with Carter that time. He's only 5'10". Savoy coming off that shoulder injury. Did not play a week ago. Carlton Malone step back here to come on the blitz. Hessler picks it up. He had Stiggers wide open, but he overthrows him. Rushed himself. Didn't have to rush that much. Never really set the back foot, but threw, falling away. Watch Hessler this time. Watch how he doesn't set. He almost feel like the blitz is coming and just throws without even setting. Never planted a foot, never threw in rhythm, but was falling away from the receiver when he let it go. And it was Mark Simino coming at him, but it was picked up by the tailback. Look how this has fallen off over the last couple of years. They were 8th and 10th this year, 44th in the NCAA in passing yard. Hard to believe with all the expectations coming into the season. So it's third and ten. Hessler with a straight drop. He's had time every time. This one completes to Cheverini. We'll see where they mark it. I don't believe he even got close to a first down, though. No, not even close. And that is the uh, the fault of Cheverini, the receiver. He's got to know where that marker is. The coaches are upset with him. He had to get across the 31-yard line and never even got close to that. He ought to come up, push to the 35, then come back to the football to get the first. And you look at Neuheisel, well, that's who he's talking to. He's not talking to his quarterback. He's talking to Darren Cheverini. Nick Peets is on for his first punt of the afternoon. And that deep is David Allen, another dangerous return man. And a 70-yard return for a touchdown against Kansas. This is a short, line drive kick, and it bounces out of bounds 
at the 38-yard line. A 33-yard punt, that's it. Well, next Saturday, America's biggest road show rolls into Ann Arbor. This is a great one. At noon Eastern, number four, Ohio State taking on number two, Michigan. The Rose Bowl, perhaps, on the line. Could this be the year for Cooper? Uh, they finally beat uh, Michigan. 3.30 Eastern time, you've got a regional lineup. There are the matchups. Check your local listings for the games in your area. Call your cable operator for information on pay-per-view. And we get word from the field that they are looking at Michael Bishop's ankle during the last series. He's back in there. The handoff to Mike Warren. Straight ahead to Bishop, at least okay right now. And let's step away, check in again with John Saunders. John? Barry, the sandwich game for Michigan between Penn State and Ohio State against a very good Wisconsin team, Trickery here. Ryan Greasy to Charles Woodson, back to the quarterback, Greasy, who takes off and gets it down to the one-yard line. Then on fourth and goal, Chris Howard with the touchdown, 7-0. Terry. All right, John, the sandwich games can be very dangerous. The Ohio State game coming up next week. Bishop, the quick out, Darnell McDonald had to go right through his hands, but... He was really well covered by Marcus Washington. Bishop was hit just as he released it, too. Got a lot of zip on it. The ball is actually well thrown, but watch the pressure they put on Bishop this time. Now, they're coming with a little twist. Now, watch. Just as he releases it, he gets a hand right there on his shoulder. Still got off a good pass. Now, watch this. Here comes the receiver, McDonald. The ball's well thrown, but good coverage by Washington, 37. Michael Bishop, we told you they were looking at his ankle. They're heavily taped, I'll tell you that. He hurt his ankle against Texas A&M. He's really now just coming around. They said he's almost to 100% this game, but he got it gained early on. Ryan Black on the blitz. They had Bishop. They don't have him anymore. Throws it all the way downfield to the end zone. It's incomplete. Burnett was there. But you get a look at the arm and the mobility of Michael Bishop. Good coverage by Wheeler to stay with him the whole time. Burnett was trying to get back to Bishop. Two guys miss him. One, two. He still, now he has time to set. Set and fires, but I want you to look at number two stays with him and runs right in Burnett's hip pocket. That's Wheeler. Great coverage by him to stay with him. James Garcia with the punt. And Wheeler on the fair catch inside the 10-yard line. So they'll mark it just outside the seven. And a 54-yard punt. Michael Bishop on the sideline. Ankle looks all right so far. Buffaloes take over inside their tent. What about the decision by Damon Wheeler to field that punt inside the tent? I mean, Terry, they say never field a ball inside the 10-yard line. Sometimes you feel if you've got some room, you may try to gamble a little bit, try to take it, and try to make a return on it. But Damon Wheeler that time, you're looking at him right here, he really wasn't pressured that much. Still fair caught it and did it inside the 10. Gives Colorado very poor field position. We told you the kicking game is going to be big today. Field position is certainly going to be big among these two teams right now. That advantage goes to K-State. Really cost them about 13 yards. They would have started at the 20 had that ball gotten to the end zone. Listen to this crowd here at Kansas State Stadium. Carrington runs outside. He turned the corner and a big gain of first down before he's ridden out of bounds across the 20. Dwayne Sherrington, the sophomore out of Santa Ana, California, on the carry. Boy, I tell you what, he has shown tremendous speed to get around that corner. They have really had success on first down all year. Now, I think this is the most important down in football. You always hear about third down conversions, but look at this. They average over six yards every time on first down. That's worth taking a look at the defense. Right ahead, they go over the left side. Sherrington again, this time he's wrapped up after a gain of about two, maybe three. Trying to power game, bringing Thomas and Johannigmeyer around on the counter tray. Pull their guard and tackle that time to get around in front of him. Trying to look power game. Let's come back and pass though. This will be second down and long. And that's exactly where Hessler and Duhas would like to throw. As a matter of fact, He's already reading the defense, looking for his target. American alone setback. Three receiver set. They're going to give it to the running back, Sherrington. He's locked up behind the line of scrimmage. Well, Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator for Kansas State, said their priority was to stop the run first. Well, I tell you what, that play surprised me. He came up, he looked at things. Now, Rowe will make this tackle, but look, 
It's just a, a, a off tackle play on second down and nine. That's the play normally they, they will throw on. They're breaking tendency a little bit, trying to mix things up for Kansas State. They weren't fooled. So it's third and nine. You gotta believe they're gonna run the play action and throw here. You got three receivers. Great drop. Catcher with time. Receiver was held for a moment and then incomplete. Boy, a lot of contact near the 40-yard line. Robert Toller was the intended receiver, and he couldn't get to the football. That ball is well thrown, but I'm telling you, the coverage is even better than that. Look at this. They're in man coverage all the way. Denmark's number 29. He's using his hands, using his body. He almost had the interception. That would have been a great pick. They were playing a two-deep five-under. Man-to-man -man coverage, and they had him all the way. There's a look at Mike Stoops, defensive coordinator. He was a great defensive back in his day, All-American. Brother, of course, the defensive coordinator at Florida. Not having the kind of year they expected or wanted. And Andy Mitchell has come on after that first punt by Nick Peach, which was not a good one. David Allen watching this one fall short as well. Makes a bit of a Colorado bounce, but it's only a 34-yard punt this time. Kansas State started the offense last time at the 38 and gave it back and pinned Colorado inside the 10. Now they're going to start at the 43-yard line. Now tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern time, 12.30 Central, the U.S. national soccer team hosts El Salvador. The U.S. will go to the World Cup. They've already qualified, but El Salvador still trying to do just that tomorrow on ABC at 12.30 Central time. So Bill Snyder's club in its own 39. That's where they have started in terms of the average so far. Good field position. Goolsby and Eric Hickson in there. Somebody moved. It may have been Justin Swift, the tight end on the right side. And we'll sort it out. Dead ball. Ball start on the outfield. Still first down. Very rare you see an offensive lineman jump like that. I mean, this is an offensive line that is huge, 6'4", 315 pounds. You talked about their size, only the Redskins and Jaguars in the National Football League are bigger. Isn't that amazing? They call themselves the tank, they roll over people. But more importantly, they've got great feet and they're very disciplined. It's very rare to see them make a mistake like that where they'll jump and get the penalty. Kendall Jaycox, the center, a senior out of Dallas, goes about 320. He's a good one. Very Hickson out to the outside, got a big hole. Across midfield to the 48-yard line. So you're going to look at Hickson. Mike Lawrence started the ball game, and now the senior out of Fort Waddle there, Florida, with the carry and a gain of 13. Anytime you run the option, it breaks you down to assignment defense. Bishop does this well. You have to respect the run. Stop it right there. He's already tied up here. Okay, so then you want to get it outside. Now, he's got to get up and make the stop on the pitch man, but he's blocked. They make that play, they make it work. Bishop's the guy you want to watch. They've got to get up and take the pitch man as well. Watched and maybe held a little bit too. A little extra going on. There goes Hickson on the option to the near side. To the 43 yard line, got a first down for the Wildcats. So they run it left, they run it right. And they'll move the chains. Over 600 yards on the year for Hickson, the number one rusher. But he and Lawrence are a great one-two punch. You know, I think being five foot eight actually helps him. He's hard to find. The offensive line we told you is huge, 6'4", 316. Behind that big offensive line, he hides. He's a hide-and-seek runner. He'll hide behind the big guys. He'll seek a hole, and when he finds it, he explodes. You yeah, saw that with Warwick Dunn at Florida State, now in the NFL. It's just tough to find him, especially when he got that huge offensive line. He's trying to get past. Goes to the other tight end in motion. Hickson got a lane to run through this time. Getting outside. And Sutter runs it out of bounds at the 38. Ball game number 24, Eric Hickson. And the first three plays run of this out of bounds drive. by number 36, Brian Sutter. They've been running left, running right, and the offensive line blowing huge gaps in that defensive front. There's a situation that we just talked about. You take Martin, he's a 500 pound bench press guy. He's 305 pounds, he's the right guard. So you pull him, you put him in front of Hickson, and Hickson just follows him up there for five yards. 
51 yards on the ground already for Bill Snyder's club. Second and six, they get it to Goolsby this time. The fullback, you hear the ghoul chant here in the crowd. Tough running inside the 35. He's a great change-up runner, too. You come back off of Hickson, who's real small, but real quick. And now you bring in Goolsby, who's 250 pounds. And he's a true power back and a great change-up runner. Much better rushing the football this year at Kansas State. They were last in the conference last year in the run game. That's really changed now with Bishop and that huge offensive line. And the priority, too. That's what they wanted to do when they started the year. Bishop can't get anywhere this time, though. They tried the option to the near side. He kept it. And he was just swarmed under. Brady McDonald, a redshirt freshman, hit him. Watch how quickly they get on him this time, though. They don't give him much of a chance to option the ball because he sees the pressure coming from the outside by 82 McDonald. He doesn't really have a chance to get out, and so he tries to cut it up, and everybody's there. McDonald played nine-man football back in Flint, South Dakota. Only 75 people in his hometown. And they're going to try a 52, almost a 53-yard field goal. Romanica hit a 56-yarder in pregame. We were watching it. This one, 20 of legs, and it's good. Martin Romanica stating his case for the Grozo Award. Two-yard field goal by Martin Gramatica. You think that doesn't make a difference when you've got a guy that's going to put points on the board from almost midfield? This is incredible. Watch his plant foot. It's firm. Boom. He follows through like a great golfer. Now watch his emotion. This is a guy that loves the game of football. He knows it's good. And look at him. Boy, what a weapon that is to have in your arsenal. You don't see that reaction from a golfer, though. He may look like he's kicking the football, but... Wow, look at the three finalists. Including Sim Glenhart from Duke, Chris Taylor at UCLA. But Gramatica has the best percentage out of all of them, and uh, he's improving his case today. Duke had a female kicker for a while, remember that? She actually, I believe, filed suit, but here's Glenhart now as a, a finalist for the, uh, the award. Well, special teams certainly one of the big parts of any game, but really this game, because Kansas State has been so good in terms of that, and both teams have great return men. And so far, we've got three field goals on the board. Yeah, and all that means field position, and so far Kansas State has had that advantage. Consequently, they lead on the scoreboard two field goals to one. Ben Kelly will give Colorado great field position on the opening return down. Not going to do it this time. Green sends it out of the end zone, and the Buffs will have to bring it out to the 20 to start their drive. Well, ABC's college football is online live with scores, stats, and highlights from all of today's games. And check out ABC sideline reporter Jack Aroot's column. Got one on there, all on America Online, keyword ABC Sports. When's your column coming out, partner? going to be a while. Still working on it. <laughs> Rick Neuheisel. Actually, Colorado has not lost to Kansas State since 1984. you got to believe that's a psychological advantage in a game like this, especially if the game comes down to a tight fit situation. Three receivers set. Hessler going to roll out to the right on first down. Nowhere to throw, but he's run out of bounds by the shot Carter after a gain of about four. Carter, the man you talked about that may be picked on today. Still not bad, though. He picks up four yards on the carry. Bring up second down and six. Come back with a little pass. Got to love Oaks and Kelly and Simino. These guys, they run to the football, though. See how quickly they got over there? There was lost containment by the defensive end, Clements. But the linebackers got over to keep the game just to four yards. Simino and Oaks, the defensive newcomers of the year the last couple of years in the Big 12. Chris Canny had that award the year before. So three straight for the Kansas State defense. Hessler rolling again, game four on the last one, and this time knocked out of bounds after a gain of about three. Lamar Chapman, who has come back after the elbow injury, ran him out. Chapman playing safety, now played cornerback last year when Joe Gordon broke his leg. Remember that? That was some backfield they had with Canny, Gordon, and yeah. Mario, all those guys back there. 
that was one of the weaknesses. Everybody had concerns about the secondary coming in to this season, but it's played quite well, although this is the biggest test that the secondary had yet. Having a great return man as well. The 95 defense for Kansas State was the number one defense in the country. They think this one is in line with that. A key third down for Colorado. That's what under pressure throws incomplete and he had a man he had his tight end Hefner but there is a flag down in the backfield so they roughed up John Hessler Darren Howard I believe was in there it was Howard now watch this he's coming on the back side has a clear shot at Hessler but see if the ball's gone see if there's a step see if he could have stopped ball's gone Oh, oh that's the, the problem. Yes. It doesn't matter whether the ball's gone or not. He went after the head. You can't do it. Flagrant foul. They'll move it 15. That's a personal foul. You can't go for a guy's head. And use that hat as a weapon. And that's huge. The Kansas State defense coming up with a stop on third and three. But Howard, and he did it. He went right out the head of John Hessler. I don't know what Bill Snyder's complaining about. The rule book is clear, and the replay showed it. And you're right, it doesn't matter if you're right or not. Eight in the box for Kansas State. Oh, that'll turn a run against it. There's no problem it can't get outside. And actually, that's Marlon Barnes, number nine, the junior out of Memphis, who's been out with an injury. We didn't know if he'd play or not. He's got some cartilage problems. They didn't know how his lateral movement would be, but look at this. It looks like he's running on ice. Watch his feet. Now, they pull the guard out in front of him now. He really never got going. Stumbled coming out of the block. Stumbled again. Never really got that motor running. Yep, Kelly with the stop. There's a quick one at linebacker, too. But Barnes has not had his knee scoped, and they can't tell what's exactly wrong with him. So he makes the comeback today, but they say he does not make his lateral moves very well at all. He runs straight ahead. With a lot of room. Breaks outside across midfield. And he's got a first down for the Buffalo. Good decision by Hessler. You know, every time Colorado can move the chains, every time the offense can get a first down, stay on there, melt some of the clock, it's helping the defense. It's keeping Bishop on the bench. The more that you can keep Bishop on the bench, that's the best defense, and that's the best way to beat Kansas State. You're right about his decision. He waited. He felt the pocket come. He stepped up, and there was absolutely nobody midfield. He went to the outside and got the first. And the other thing about sitting on the bench a long time today, wind chill's about 15 to 20 degrees. Yeah, you, you, mentioned, cold. you mentioned his ankle's not 100%. He's got it nicked up a little bit again today. That won't help him. First down inside the 45. They're going to run off the left side down to close to the 40. Goes Barnes once again. But we didn't really think that we would see Marlon Barnes, as you said, and the knee injury against Texas, and was the fastest of all the running backs for Colorado, and a straight-ahead tough runner, which they've needed this year. Compliment Rochelle Trout. Well, you know, we talked about Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator at Kansas State. He's a young, aggressive coach. Players love him. And he really runs some serious defense section. His defense is aggressive. That's coming on the blitz. Directing traffic, here they come. Barnes wrapped up, nowhere to go. Jared Cooper, the redshirt freshman out of Parallel, Texas. Out of a safety blitz, you could, we talked about it just before. You could almost feel it was coming. So the end of the first quarter, but all field goals so far, 6-3 Wildcats. Three, you're looking at Ben Kelly top return man in the nation in the ice pack on the forehead. They don't feel too good at this point with the weather the way it is, but trying to recoup on the sideline. Kansas State pressures you across the line of scrimmage plays man. They're doing that right now on third down. Third and seven. Hessler with time. Got a man complete at the 30-yard line. And a first down. It's his tight end Brody Hefner. Well, we talk about big targets. How about Brody Hefner? Six foot five and a half. Going against Travis Oaks. They got man coverage. So they go to a quick three-step drop. He's looking to the out pattern for his tight end, and he has him matched up against the linebacker Oaks. You know, Oaks 
He's a glue type guy who holds things together defensively. He had good coverage. He just couldn't climb the big tight end, 6-5, to get to the football. And Heffner's been a big target. He had 13 catches coming into this game. So first down, play action. Heffner looking deep over the middle. Looking up. What a play. Dimitri Denmark got a hand in there at the last instant. That's pretty good coverage on Stiggers. Stiggers thinks he has him beat. The ball is pretty well thrown, too. But look at Denmark. I mean, he just plays the ball and gets up and knocks it away. He really didn't have a chance for the pick. He's got to extend fully just to knock it away. But that's how close it was. You know, in games like this, you can see guys, you can feel guys that feel like they're hot. I think right now, Phil Savoy thinks he's that guy. Every time he, he, he runs a pattern, he's coming back complaining that they didn't throw to him. He wants the football. And they haven't gotten it to him so far. Hessler really not even looking for him. Savoy, probably most dangerous man in terms of the wideouts. Now tonight on ABC, Leslie Nielsen is back in a movie special with Priscilla Presley and Anna Nicole Smith. One of Timmy's favorites, Naked Gun, 33 and a third. The final insult at 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central, followed by Dylan McDermott in a brand new episode of The Practice tonight on ABC. While we were talking up here, Savoy went to the sidelines. He was almost begging for the football. Dwayne Sherrington now in for Michelle Troutman, the lone setback. Second and ten. Hessler backs him up. Option to the near side. Looks for a lane. Has one for a moment, but it closes quickly. Jeff Kelly, the middle linebacker with great speed. The Juco All-American out of LaGrange, Texas. Jeff Kelly, the leading tackler, 48 tackles for the year, 28 tackles for losses. But look at it, number eight in the middle of your screen comes through untouched and actually trail the play and make the play from behind. Great speed by the middle linebacker. He's got six sacks on the year. He's got 20 tackles for losses, making 21. Kelly with the speed, Oaks with the leadership. Simino, a solid outside linebacker. That's a great trio for the Wildcat. Another big third down. Chris Anderson in motion. Hessler under pressure, down he goes. Simino got there and tipped him up. Third sack of the year for Mark Simino, the sophomore out of Smith Center, Kansas. Watch the bottom right-hand screen right here, and you're going to see Johanningmeyer can't get out quick enough to stop him. Johanningmeyer tries to chop him and can't get there. Great body control by Simino to actually take his feet out as he flies by. Boy, that's an athletic play right there. Guy plays sideline to sideline. He's got tremendous quickness. Plays on the weak side oftentimes uncontested from the tight end off the tight end side. It's been all field goals so far. This one a 46-yard try by Jeremy Aldridge. Got enough leg just inside the left upright, and it's good. How about this? Two explosive teams, great offensive teams, and we've got four field goals. Cold weather, maybe having its effect. We're tied at six. Good one going on in the Big 12. Eight, six, six. Four field goals. And Colorado set to kick off with Jason Leslie, the senior out of Palacios, Texas. Gerald Neesman with a 99-yard return a week ago against Kansas, the number two return man in the country. We'll see what he can do. They kicked away from him the last time. Yeah, and I think they may continue to do that. The only bad thing is you give them pretty good field position when you, you pooch it high and get one of those sunshine kicks. And you've got Goolsby, a fullback, two fullbacks. English as well at the 25. They kick it away this time. And it's with the wind eight yards deep. And that's the decision. You have the wind, you kick it off deep. Neesman can't bring it out. You know, I can't understand how John Leslie can kick without a shoe. I mean, it is cold here. Makes the ball feel like lead. He has a post sock on, and the guy's kicking the football and kicking it down out of the end zone, but to the back of the end zone. You watch him, though. He goes to the sideline. He'll put that sock and shoe on quickly. I hope so. There he goes. Already. Oh, he's not putting his sock on, though. See, he's a man. Better man than I. I got about 10 layers on up here in the booth. Well, Michael Bishop really hasn't had an opportunity to get things going with a passing game yet. 
What a talent he is. Bishop calls himself a cross between Tommy Frazier and John Elway. R.C. Slocum of Texas A&M said he looks like Cordell Stewart. Play action. Looking deep. The far sideline. Man-to-man covers. McDonald with a catch. No. He had a step. Couldn't hang on. Damon Wheeler on the cover. All right, so he only threw it 60 yards that time. And this guy's got a gun. We got into a little debate, the two of us, yesterday. He Against says, the wind, too. Yeah, he says he threw it 93 yards. I don't think that's humanly possible. But look how strong his arm is. And not only is he thrown into the wind, but he puts a lot of air under it. I mean, he throws it high to let the receiver run under it. That's a ball that should have been caught. Look at it. He thinks so, too. He thinks he's hit. He's backed up. Like a golfer that hits it right into the flag. I mean, he thought that was right there. The thing you love about him, too, is he thinks he can do anything on a football field. It does off the time. Going to throw again. They're going to roll the time. Got a man right off, and McDonald has to wait on it. And drops down at the 30. There's a flag down at the 13-yard line, though. We'll wait and see. Somebody took a late shot at Bishop. So it's going to be declined, and they'll move it all the way down to the 30, but you have to wonder how he got so wide open. Ryan Sutter, the, the safety, lets him run by. He's actually looking for the tight end. If you stop it right there, you'll see this is the guy he's looking for, but he is covered. So he'll pull back. And now look, he's wide open, and Sutter, 36, is now chasing. This time he doesn't overthrow him. He just lets him wait for it. And that's the only shot that Colorado had is if he had to wait because here comes Sutter 36 from behind. But I mean, McDonald got all the way back there. Now here's the hit on Bishop. And that was really late. Dealey Maumau hit him late and they'll tack it on. So it brings it after the 50 yard pass to McDonald. He gets a breather on the sideline. It's spotted just outside the 15 yard line. First and ten. Hickson wrapped up, and he'll lose about three on the play. Southward, the outside linebacker making the hit. Ron Murkerson back on the sideline. Southward in for him. Southward read the play from the get-go. and got there actually before the ball carrier could. I mean, he was right there to make that hit. Brandon Southward, the junior out of Colorado Springs. Bit of a free spirit. Yeah, and they do put him on the, on the tight end. You know, he is the tight end watcher. If the tight end is blocking down, he knows the ball's coming his way. So Bishop sets up in the shotgun now. Takes the inside grab, he's got some moves. One on one down to the 12-yard line. And that's a pretty good tackle, actually. You get stuck one on one with Bishop on the corner, Timmy. Tackle by number one. Not good news. Kelly. Yeah. Kelly and Black, number one and number six, will make the tackle on him. But Bishop, look at this. What a great fake. Boy, look at, look at that fake. Olsen, 55, took that, and now he's out here on the secondary. First, Kelly undercuts him, and Black finishes him off. But tremendous ball handling by the magician, Bishop. Then Kelly was banged up on the last series, too. Right outside his eye. He's got a bump, had the ice on it, but he's back in there and playing. But coming on the blitz, the pitch to Hickson. Can he turn the corner and get there? He's got a first down ball the five-yard line, but he's knocked out there. Actually, the mark puts it pretty close to where the chain is but I do think he has it. That is a first, so it'll be first down and goal just inside the five. But again, look at this. They run the option. They get good blocking on the corner. And there's your safety black number six who gets cut off but gets there in time to knock him out. four-yard line. Boy, they're great play calling right now. Mixing things up. Bishop becoming very effective. And you've got first and goal inside the five. I see you a little confused right now. Goolsby and Hickson in the backfield. Goolsby to pull back in motion. Hickson follows, fights his way down to the three. Okay. He was just stuck there. Ryan Black, a strong safety, made the tackle. tackle really six. great Ryan stories, Black. too, these two safeties. Ryan Black, Thank Ryan Sutter, two former walk-ons. Tough kids who really fought their way into the starting lineup, and now they're really stars for this defense. Yeah, both of them. You know, we, we were talking with uh, Ryan Sutter's parents last night at the hotel. <laughs> Former walk-on, became a special team base, scholarship player now, one of CU's top ta tacklers. He had knee surgery early in the season, fought through that. I mean, it's just a, a great story. Mother wanted us to tell him to cut his hair. Nixon looking to get to the end zone. He got there. 
behind that big offensive line. Jay Cox, Martin, and Young. And it's Martin 78 that gets off the pile last. Look at him, the purple jersey just moving him out of there. Great blocking, hits him with the leg strength at the one to get through. And I'm telling you, we talked about the offensive line. They call themselves the tank, and they just rolled it in. Hickson's ninth touchdown overall. He's got eight rushing touchdowns this year. Romanica hooks it in just inside the left up line. First touchdown of the game. We'll see now. I'll see you can answer, but Hickson running hard, running quick, and running for six. College football brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers. Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know, use Valvoline. And MetLife. Get met. It pays. Michael Bishop has just taken Kansas State 80 yards for the first touchdown of the day. Of course, the big play was to Darnell McDonald. He was looking for his tight end, reloads, buys some time. Now all of a sudden he sees McDonald has gotten behind the safety Sutter wide open. Underthrows him a little bit just to make sure that he does have the completion. That allows Sutter to close in, but still they go down and score off that. So Jamie Ream. With a short kick this time. And it's bottled by Kelly and the Wildcats have it at the 23. Jared Cooper. The defensive back with the recovery. The wind blowing against the kickoff team and it blew away from Kelly. Watch, he stumbles. See that? He stumbles just before he gets there. And it short hops him and hits him right in the shin. Great coverage to come down and get the fumble. But Kelly, who already has a scratched up face, and he's thinking about that a little bit, not totally on the football, then stumbles and fumbles. And let's get a report from Lewis Johnson and Ben Kelly right now. Lewis? Guys, he's been in a, a lot of pain down here on the sideline. Imagine being so cold and having an ice bag on your face. That's because his helmet came loose, hit him in the eye, and he's been having a lot of trouble. The eye is swollen like he's been in a boxing match. All right, Lewis certainly could have affected him on that return. There goes Bishop. The ten down to the six. Michael Bishop on the run. A gain of 17. One thing you don't want to do is shorten the field with Kansas State. You do that, and all of a sudden, here they go. Now they start to roll. But watch this: great speed to get outside. This is a predetermined quarterback draw, and he sees linemen, and he just kind of smiles. He knows he can run around the linemen. But what happens to Navy? Hannibal Navy, the linebackers, is not there. The linebacker has to get there and make that play. They've got to be looking for him because they run that play 12 to 14 times a game. So it's first and goal at the six. Lawrence looking to get outside, can't get there. Wrapped up at the five, and there is a flag inside the five. I believe they're going to call this on Grosky here for holding. So that will back up Bill Snyder's offense. Bruce Kidder got into the secondary and just locked on, started dancing with him. Now, Timmy, special teams with the field goals today and the kickoffs already playing a huge part in terms of field position. But with Michael Bishop, this Kansas State offense can explode. Watch, watch. 82 gross Gideon. See how he locked on? See how his hands have the jersey right there on Wheeler? Just locked on to him. Actually, tearing his jersey off his shoulder pad. That one was a bit obvious. Yeah. And right in front of the side jersey. Bishop with the 50-yard pass to McDonald for the first touchdown moments ago. And then Kelly... Couldn't get a handle on the kickoff. So Kansas State knocking at the door once again. Not a, first and goal now back in the 15. Not a bad thing to come in with your nickel package and put a spy on Bishop. There goes Bishop looking to run. Got three white jerseys all around it. Reverses his field. Wound up and pounded by Malmau at the 33. You know, Malmau missed him once, came back and got him. Hey, 
and maybe too much running by Bishop that time. Well, they did come in with their nickel package, but what they did is they had great containment on both sides. See, he doesn't have any outside leverage and figures, all right, I got to go back. All right, there's the miss by Mount Mount 77. But watch him now. He gets up off the ground, and for a big guy, whoo, here he comes. Mount Mount's 295 pounds. Missed him, got off the ground, came up, and hit him again. You dream of those opportunities if you're a defensive lineman. There's a guy that squats 720 pounds. All the way back outside the 30 now. Over the middle to slip the tight end. Great throw. Touchdown, Kansas State. 32-yard strike from Bishop to Justin Swift. You know, Ryan Sutter, the free safety, was playing center field, saw this ball, opted not to take the interception, but instead hit him at the time of the catch. There's the hit, but he just falls off, doesn't wrap his arm, and there's the touchdown by Swift. Bad decision by Ryan Sutter. You're going to hit a guy to try to knock him loose rather than try to get the pick. You better make sure you knock it loose, and if you don't, wrap your arms and take him down. Sutter goes about 205, Justin Swift over 250. I'll take that matchup if I'm Swift. Romatica with the extra point. And the Kansas State offense exploding. They got the help and the fumble on the kickoff. So they put it right to the end zone. Bishop to Swift. Ouch. Ryan Sutter with his helmet on. He's the safety. Missed the tackle and Kansas State scored to make it 26. Here he is right here. Go ahead and roll it and I'll show you. He saw this play develop and he actually makes a pretty good play. It's an outstanding safety, but watch. You either have to commit yourself to the interception. Stop it right here. All right. You have to commit yourself to the interception or dislodging it and wrapping your arms. Go ahead and roll it. You'll see he goes to dislodge it but doesn't wrap his arms. Instead, Swift makes the catch, bounces off of him and scores. Mrs. Sutter is not going to want to watch that replay. Well, even Ryan is upset with himself. He's an outstanding safety. He knows he made a bad play. Kelly bobbled the last one. This a short kick that goes out of bounds against the wind, but they'll bring it out to the 35-yard mark. And barely made the 30. Bill Snyder wanted a pooch kick, but he didn't want to kick it out of bounds. The legal procedure kicked out of bounds. The ball will be put in play at the 35. Well, a lot of football left right here in Manhattan, but some good football tonight on ESPN2. Number five, Tennessee. SEC championships still on the line. Alliance ball, everything else. Peyton Manning entering his final stretch of the senior year. That's tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central on ESPN2. The ball's still very much in the hunt. Bucks on first down. That's the one in the option. Keeps it. Still up. Now knocked down at the 42-yard line. Good carry on first down for Hessler. John Saunders, what's going on? Well, Terry, it is a wild one out west. UCLA and Washington both needing to win to get to the Rose Bowl. Cade McNabb, 47 yards over the top to Jim McElroy. This one tied it at 14 apiece. Washington has just come back and scored another one. Brock Heward, 20 to 14 now. The point after is pending. Terry. You've got Washington, Washington State next week. You've got UCLA, USC next week. Uh, but actually, I was back then. For the Rose Bowl story to be told. Dwayne Carrington straight ahead, tough running. And he's got a first down for the Buffalo. Talk about UCLA. What a job Bob Toledo has done there this year after losing the first couple and then being on the hot seat. I mean, they've just gone on a tear. He changed the entire thing. It's a tough football team now. Had them going one on one in the locker room before. Coming out well, and playing, they watching. I mean, that's unbelievable. That was the criticism that they were a soft football team. It has been the last couple of years, but it's a different club right now. The beat by Washington State though early on. One that may haunt them. First down for Colorado. Sherrington with a lot of room to break through. One man to beat. It's Chapman. The break to the outside. Knocked out inside the five-yard line at the one is Dwayne Sherrington. That's three runs in a row for Colorado. Very unusual for a team that throws 30 times. Obviously, they see something that they are attacking. 
All right, now this is something they felt like they could do. Look at the hole he gets, though. He gets a great push from all those white jerseys. They dominate the line of scrimmage. Now here's your safety, Chapman. Going to try to chase him down now. Knocks him out at the one and saves the touchdown. Actually, his foot hit the line. That's a, that's a great play of 51 yards. And CU just bounces right back with the running game. Well, they've given up big look plays defensively, but offensively, look at what they have done the last five games. Plays over 20 yards to keep in the ball game every time. They're in six to fullback. Marlon Barnes. Robert Ruth. Kansas State has it. Chapman at the 17-yard line with the recovery. Are you kidding me? been the story this year for John Hessler and Colorado. Well, Howard came with the pressure and screwed things up. Then they started stumbling around. The ball went loose. But how about Chapman? Chapman's extra effort knocked him out and saved the touchdown. Now he recovers this. Look, here comes the pressure. Hessler stumbles. He never gets the ball because it hits his chest plate. High on his number. Now watch. Here's Chapman. The ball bounces right up to him. So all that extra effort to save the touchdown, chasing him down and knocking him out. Pays big benefits, and he comes back and gets the, the fumble recovery. That ball just hit him high on the chest plate. Barnes just never got it. Tesla came out of there stumbling because of the pressure coming down from the defensive end, Howard. All too familiar speed for Rick Neuheisel on the bus this year. And Barnes, good game on first down. To the 27. And a subdued, maybe shocked sideline right now. Oh, they get all the way down to the one-yard line and first and goal. And Hessler left shaking his head. Yeah, look, John's talking to himself. Can't believe it. I mean, you would think that's a sure touchdown, and all of a sudden, the ball game's close again. A gain of nine after the running play. There goes Mark. And he's got a first down. Up to the 34, maybe the 35-yard line. You know, it looks right now like like CU's defense is so conscious of the run by Bishop and the pass game that they're starting to play soft. They're catching. They're not being as aggressive the as they normally are. Good watch the purple the jerseys pass. lock on, and then watch. White jerseys are just being backed out of there. It's almost like they're catching blocks rather than defeating them to get to the ball carrier. They've spent a lot of time on the field. A.J. Kirchhoff, defensive coordinator. Lawrence looks for room, bounces away from one, but wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. That'll help. That'll put him in second down and long. Brady McDonald was in on that. Ryan Black as well. Now, this defensive front for Colorado, too. Rick Neuhausel and A.J. Kristoff really challenged them last week before the Iowa State game. They gave up a lot of points, but they made some big plays, especially up front. Billy Mau Mau, one of them. Terrell K, the defensive end, and they felt better about this front. But now they spent a lot of time on the field here in the first half. Bishop play action. Throws to complete. Kareem with a catch first down. David Wheeler ran him out of bounds. I'm going to tell you something. Mike Phillips is the nickel linebacker. They had him in. They were in a nickel situation. He came backside on the blitz, but was tentative. So aware of the versatility and escapability of the Bishop. Watch, he'll stop almost. Look, he stopped and waited for the blocker before he made contact. Then the ball's just thrown perfectly. You know, you say what you will about this guy. He's got a strong arm and he's a great runner, but he also now is becoming a very accurate passer. Devin Marie's team played very well in the last three or four games. Bishop keeps it. Ball's ahead for a gain of about two. Timmy, you look at this drive right now. It's Ty Gregorek, the freshman, made the tackle. This is a key defensive series for Colorado. You've got 438 in counting. They've given up 20 points in the first half, some on special teams, but they've got to stop them here. Yeah, I felt that way in the last drive, to be honest with you, but this one now re really brings a sense of urgency. Colorado's defense has had only one really bad game. That was Missouri. But they do give up big plays, and it's killed them here in this first half. <laughs> Play action. Bishop with time again. Goes behind him. Tight end, Justin Swift, and he was open. I'll say this, every time Bishop throws, he's being knocked down. And eventually, that's going to take his toll. He's going to start looking to see where they're coming from, and he's going to throw out of rhythm. He's not going to set and wait like he has been. He's only completed four passes, but he's got 124 yards. 
and a touchdown. A big strike of 50 yarder to McDonald. Well, for the season, he's only in the low 40% range. He's getting better. But the thing is, when he connects, it's usually a big play. Big haul this time for Lawrence. Straight ahead, but it closed once he got through that initial front. Down to the 47, Ty Gregorick, the two freshman, tripped him up. Here comes your critical third down situation. Or fourth down. You're in their territory. You would think, all right, you're up 20 to 6. Do you take this fourth and try to get the first when you're, uh, you need four or five? They say, no, they're going to punt it. Rochelle Troutman back deep at his own 10 yard line. James Garcia under pressure. They went after him a little bit. They hit Jared Cooper right in the helmet. And down the inside the one. Now it touched Cooper all the way back out. That's where it's got to be spotted. Yeah, they've got it spotted right now at the 23, but I think he hit it up by about the 25 or 26. Hit him right in the head. It was only as far as he could throw his beanbag. At this side. See what yard line that hit him on the head. Well, they're not sure where they're going to spot it now. It looks maybe but, like it's a 23. Well, they're spotting it where the beanbag landed. All right, oh, now they move it up yeah. to the 25. Here it is again. See where it hits his, his helmet. It's a short punt. Nobody's looking for it. Nobody's calling ball. All right, so that's pretty good accuracy. Mark him to put it right there at the 25-yard line. That really helped Colorado, the fact that it hit him in the head. Otherwise, it's probably inside the 10. It's only a 23-yard punt, though. A little whistle of dead. They were pretty accurate with that beanbag. He threw it about 30 yards. All right, Hessler's got 3.28 to work. He's got to use the sidelines, got to get him in and out of the huddle with urgency and be active. Three receivers set, penalty markers down. Hessler hit as he drove. He's got a man one-on-one, -on -one. incomplete. Marcus Stiggers was out there, Denmark on the coverage, but Andre Rowe put a lick on John Hessler. And we'll see what the marker is all about. Mark. Money out there. Five yard penalty, first down. And another penalty, the false start, which has been one of the problems for Colorado this year. Good news, bad news. Hey, you get that play over, but you're going to move you back five yards. And time now is down to 321. Watch what happens after Hessler releases this football, though. He gets pretty good coverage. He feels like, all right, I can step up and throw, and he does. And all of a sudden, just takes it to chops. Well, Olsen, Olsen came hard, too. You mentioned it earlier. And he still hasn't done it. He hasn't looked towards Phil Savoy at all. You know, and Savoy was begging early. He's not even doing that anymore. He wanted the football. Felt like he could he could go ahead and make something happen. Here he's locked onto the freshman 35. That's your freshman quarterback. Phil Savoy is 6'3. He's a senior. He's an outstanding receiver. And right now he's matched up against Carter, who's only 5'9 and a half, and he's a freshman. There's your referee, Hal Dowden, making a phone call. Maybe a problem with the clock. Right now it shows 328. And they may have to put some seconds back on. Well, they did. Well, yeah, they, put, yeah, they, put eight, they put eight seconds back on. It was at 320. So now we're set. They've got the breath. First and 15 after the false start. Look, run, dies out to the 22. Jeff Kelly made sure he stayed down. And it, Phil Savoy was locked up again, and, and they didn't even look for it. Yeah, and here's the deal now. Carter, the freshman, is the one that's starting to feel confident and cocky. He's going up and patting Savoy on the butt, you know, and talking to him a little bit. He's got a little bit of Chris Carter in him. He's uh, very, very instinctive. Red yeah, shirt freshman out of Denver. Yeah, he's the guy that was in that serious bus accident this past summer. Best friend died in it. He was banged up very badly. Picked up with Kohler this time. Three receivers set again. 
overthrows, and that's who the intended receiver was, but Hessler overthrows Robert Tiller, who is one-on-one -on -one with Carter. Colorado really out of sync right now, and they're still not looking to fill Savoy. I know we've got a pretty good view up here, but I want you to watch. Here he is at the very top of your screen. Savoy comes underneath, and look at it. He is wide open, and they're not even looking at it. And Cheverini's even pointing towards it. Play was set up perfectly, and they never looked as well. Savoy to the far side. Anderson in the slot. Marcus Stiggers to the near side. See if they come back with that same play. the 28 after the deflection Joe Bob Clemens the junior out of Emporia Kansas comes up with the pick boy what a great push up the middle by the defense watch this Hessler he's got to find the lane to throw and he does it but Evans gets up and gets a big call on it now look all purple jerseys get a couple whites over there Anderson came in low but Clemens comes in you got to get it at its highest point. And look at Clements, number 46, go up and get that ball, using his body to shield people off. Play was made by Evans to knock it loose. But then when everybody went for it, it was Clemens that came up with the INT. So a great opportunity for the offense now for Kansas State, though, after the kick. They run it with Lawrence going off the right side, gain of about four. But maybe the special teams and now mistakes. The, the pick, the fumble down at the one-yard line. Mistakes again hurting Colorado. And with all the talent on Colorado, it looks as if when things start to go bad, they lose confidence a little bit and get very tentative. 31% off the turnover. Play action. Bishop to the near side. Getting a block. Breaks it outside. Tackle maybe late. We'll see if there's a flag. None yet. Shouldn't be. Paul Curry's got the first down, though. Big old Todd Weiner. Number 75 led the way. Good play action. But you know, this is the guy you have to be watching. Forget the play action. You've got to be watching Bishop at all at all times. And then see the contact's made well within the playing field. There is absolutely nothing illegal about that. Good no call. Boy, you look at this guy's making blocks downfield. That's Wade 75. He's a 300 pounder going to run it back to the far side this time as Bishop took some punishment too on the tackle. Stutter was in there. You know we talk about how big this offensive line is but they're downfield making blocks 10, 15 yards downfield. It's got great feet. They run so well you have to believe these guys are going to play on the next level. And it's survival of the fittest on that offensive line. Guys are just getting banged up and yet they, they continue to, to make big plays. 6'4", 316 pounds on average. Bishop with a world of time. Got McDonald after the bobble. First down, down to the five, and Kelly wraps him up. Pass was complete from Michael Bishop to number 80, Darnell, Darnell McDonald. Darnell McDonald caught a 50-yarder earlier in the second quarter. They go to him again, and they've got first and goal. Yeah, and another missed tackle. I don't know if you saw Wheeler come over and missed the tackle, gave him another five yards. Colorado has to start wrapping up defensively. They're beating themselves. First down and goal, Kansas State, five-yard line. Uh, and if you're A.J. Kristoff or Rick Neuheisel, you say, you're in position. You're in position to make plays. You're just not making them. This time they do. They jump inside the five to the four. Ryan Black got there with some help. Rick Neuheisel couldn't get anybody's attention on the field. He sent Ben Kelly all the way down to the side judge to call timeout. Now he walks back up near Neuheisel. And the State calls the timeout while we have a moment. Let's check in to see what is coming up at halftime. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 97, games with the Rose Bowl hanging in the balance. We'll have the highlights. And we'll also talk about some of the crazy going-ons in the polls here the last couple of weeks. It's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 97. John and Todd will have all the action in a few moments. 53 seconds of game time left until the half here in Manhattan. Those guys in New York talking about what a mix-up it has been in the polls at the Judgment Day. How about the bowl situation with so many teams on the bubble, so many teams still alive, 
Here, of course, Colorado fighting to get in and to even qualify for a bowl. They've got to win either today or against Nebraska next week. They're at home against Nebraska, but uh, you got to figure you'd want to win today. Yeah, so you would think it'd be a tremendous sense of urgency. And, of course, for uh, the Wildcats, they want an Alliance Bowl situation. They want to finish up 10-1. and one. They're only lost being to Nebraska. The number eight right now, you look at the top six, really, and uh, you've got, of course, next week, Ohio State and Michigan playing, number two against number four. Florida State still has to play Florida. A lot of football left, and nothing is still by any means right now. Now, I would think the most likely destination right now for K-State is the Cotton Bowl, but they still want that alliance, and they're still alive for it. Gangwish and Goolsby, two fullbacks. Goolsby finding his way, following his way to the end zone. The second effort by Brian Goolsby, the junior out of Dodge City, Kansas. A four-yard run to pay dirt. You could say, I'm coming right at you. He could tell him where he was going to run. It didn't matter. He ran right over him. 250-pounder. Watch him. He's going to line up. Here comes your linebacker, Phillips, 91. He gets blocked out. There's the hole. There's Mau Mau. He can't get him. Now he's in he's against Sutter. Sutter can't make the tackle. Goolsby runs right over him and into the end zone. You talk about a power back. There he is. They say he's down 15 pounds from a year ago. He's still a load. 15 pounds from 265 is good big. The Madigan on for the extra point. Puts me up right. Extra point is good. So the Wildcats on a roll. They've taken advantage of the mistakes that the Buffaloes have made. And this is a big lead here in the first half. This is a great run. He gets great contact. He is actually stopped. And then watch his second effort. First, there's the hole. Then he's in the secondary. There's the contact. Now watch this. Bounces off that, keeps his legs going. Mm, that is a great run by a power back. Second touchdown of the year. So Rick Neuheisel, who has experienced a very disappointing season, to say the least. They came in with great expectations. They were picked anywhere from number one to number 12 or 13 in the country. Yeah, but I think when the Sporting News picked him number one, there were a lot of people that looked at that and said, you know, they aren't as good as what the Sporting News thinks. And I think Rick was one of those guys. He expected to be better than they are, but I don't think that he really believed and bought into this, that they were number one. So a lot of pressure was put on him by the media, and then, of course, the local media jumped on him even harder Hessler started playing a little inconsistent. Things started to fall apart. They got shell-shocked early on. And they really had a lot of injuries, especially on defense, yeah. too. That's, that's I agree. Definitely hurt them, not to make excuses, but certainly has played a role. Well, 14 Kansas State points off of three Colorado turnovers. Andy Green, Ben Kelly, bubble one earlier, and he's taken down by the man who recovered that bubble. Jared Cooper with the hit. And I mean him. Come to stop a runaway roller coaster. I mean, right now, watch number 40 come bouncing into the right hand of your screen. Whoop! These guys are playing with emotion. They're flying around. They're wild-eyed. They're having fun. Look at that. Big smile on his face. You now the Home Depot coaches back deals with Bill Snyder, the only Kansas State coach to have a Career record over 500 since Teddy Roosevelt was in office. Alaska and Hawaii were not states. Joseph took the foul and leaving the U.S. has gone. Hessler on the run. Got a first down, runs out of bounds. Good play. Good clock, Madison. Got the first. Run out of bounds. 37 and a half seconds left. See if you can get down and at least get a field goal out of this. Well, and with all the problems this season, for this offense and for John Hessler, the one thing that they have been able to do is they have come back in games time and again, early on especially, but last week against Iowa State, they were down by 18 twice and came back a long drive to win it at the end of the game. Three receivers set. Quick drop, stickers, a little bit low. Stop the clock 34.3. Remember, they've got a couple timeouts. They don't want to take those into the locker room with them. Still have not looked for Super Boy. And 
if he makes that catch, it's a gain of maybe four. And that's about it. So the fact that he didn't make it certainly doesn't hurt at all. Now, if you're going to go across the middle, if you're going to put a guy in the middle of the field, you better be ready to call a timeout. Only three of 11 for Hester. And he hasn't gone to Savoy yet. This one batted down. Could have been picked off again. And again, it was six foot six, Jerome Evans with a big hand in the air. He's having fun. They're all, the guys in purple jerseys right now are having fun. I mean, they have all the momentum. Obviously, they've got to lead 27 to six. It's easy to have fun that way. But I mean, it's tough to stop a team when they're like that. They're in that mode. They're in that positive, consistent, cocky mode. Make a big play. A little less than 30 seconds, 29.5 and counting, they're going to run it this time. Dwayne Charrington, did he get the first down? I don't believe so. Just shy of the marker, at least. And we will see. Colorado took a lot of time before they called the timeout. 19 seconds to go. So it would bring up, Timmy, fourth and one with 19 seconds. And while we have a moment, let's take a look at what is coming up on ABC. look at Leslie Nielsen and not laugh, no matter what he's doing. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to figure out this time out. I'm not sure why Colorado called it with 19 seconds left. You think they let the clock roll. I mean, they're just kicking the ball away here, and you're going to give Kansas State more time. You're right. If you're going to go for it on fourth down, then it's one thing, but you're running away. Nobody back deep in Kansas State. Rolling out of bounds inside the 10, and there is 11 seconds left on the clock. A 44-yard punt. So Rick Neuheisel is trying to get to the house right now. Go in, get warm, talk things over, and try to regroup. Neither of those gentlemen will bear a smile on their faces anytime soon. Got a few snow flurries starting to fall. Where? In Wyoming? How did you pick that up? I don't see one. Someone just came to the booth. Kansas State going to go to one knee and let the clock run out. Michael Bishop gets the crowd on their feet. John Hetzler just wants to get warm for a few minutes and figure out a way to move the football in the second half. Pretty impressive first half by Kansas State, I'll tell you that. Took advantage of the turnovers and put number on the board. 27 points on the board. And Kansas State with a big lead. Valvoline halftime 97 with John Saunders and Todd Blackledge is coming up. in Manhattan throwing tortillas. They want to go to the Fiesta Bowl, and Kansas State could be on their way. 
to an alliance ball. Terry Gannon, Tim Brandt, and Timmy in the first half. It's all Kansas State, and most, much of it off the mistakes and turnovers of Colorado. I don't think there's any question about that. Colorado helped him tremendously. Three big turnovers. How about this one right here? Kelly Fripp stumbles. The ball hits his shin. They get it. Cooper recovers. Down close. Down by the one. They're ready to come back. Barnes can't get the ball. Boom. There he is. There's the turnover. Chapman gets it. Now they go down it one more time. Look, it's deflected. Evans got a hand on it. Cooper makes the inter. Clements rather makes the interception. Three turnovers, and at the same time, Hess was unable to do anything offensively. Just three of twelve with an interception. Turned a couple of those into points, and that's been the difference. And he has yet to go to one of his favorite receivers, Bill Savoy. And he missed last week with a shoulder injury, but Hessler hasn't even looked for him yet this week. Jamie Ream. Gets this underway, and this one's going to fall out of the end zone. Ben Kelly without a chance to return it. The number one return man did something on the first one, but not since. And look at the first half possession. Well, the first drive Colorado had right here to start the ball game was outstanding. They went down, they got points out of it. Almost had a touchdown, they didn't. They settled for the field goal. Then they go punt, punt, field goal, still in it. All right, now everything starts to change. Fumble, interception, and a punt. And all of a sudden, it's 27-6. Hessler is unable to move the ball because he has not been able to hit his receivers. And Savoy, who's been on the field all day, hadn't gotten one yet. So Hessler back out. First good ten from the 20-yard line. There's Shell Troutman on the carry over the left side, wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. He hasn't been able to do a whole lot so far here in Manhattan. And the Dean Witter first half statistics, here they are. They tell the story, especially the turnovers. Yeah, exactly. That's why we highlighted them, the three turnovers we just talked about, and look at the points off of, 14 points. Everything else has been fairly even except the passing yards. That's because uh, Michael Bishop has just been outstanding all day, running and passing. So it's second in nine. Great drop under pressure from McIntyre. Tesla gets away. Dives down at the 26-yard line. Well, they are not letting John Hessler breathe this afternoon. It's that Kansas State defense, especially the pass defense that has been so good the last couple of years. You know, Hessler has taken all the heat this year. Not all of it deserved. I mean, the offensive line just letting guys run free. I mean, you can see right there how the guys just came through. McIntosh, 77, broke through. The Oaks just waiting to make the tackle. I mean, there is not a whole lot of room for Hessler to move. Evans, McIntosh, Clements, and Howard up front doing a terrific job for the Wildcats. But third and four, Hester wants to change the play, but he doesn't have enough time. Which brings the crowd out of their seats once again. The timeout call, they'll have a word with Rick Neuheisel, and it's not a happy one. Time out on the field. We will take a break, step away, and be back as well.
Savoy came into the game with 29 catches, and he still has 29 catches. Well, you know, a shoulder injury kept him out last week, and he may have gotten out of the way of Hessler. I mean, Hessler is not looking for him at all today. Maybe because he wasn't there last week, but he's been open a lot. They aren't even looking at his number. He has no catches. He said, that's got to be frustrating. Number four, we see the Colorado history. That's the option. The pitch back, fighting for a first down. We'll see where they mark it. It looks Ball like they got a good five. spot. That's, that's a great Robinson. second effort, too, after the first contact. Maybe we'll see a better resolve out of Colorado. It looks like they got the win taken out of them early. There's three turnovers. They just need to play tentatively there the last eight minutes of the first half. And they haven't really been able to establish the running game at all. Herschel Troutman, 18 yards in the game. That's all. Wayne Charrington, the sophomore, comes in for a Then gets the call. Mike Dizzo spins and is brought down by Lamar Chapman. You know, actually, I, I'm not sure I agree with that statement, Terry. I, I think they outrushed Kansas State in the first half. They got the running game going pretty well. They just couldn't complement it with any passing. Well, it was going early in the first uh, drive for the football game. You're right, after the long return by Ben Kelly. But after that, little bits and pieces, but the turnovers in it. You've got Hessler right yeah. now also putting the ball on the ground. They're absolutely right. The turnovers there in line to key. They had 133 yards rush in the first half, but three turnovers you right. first down and maybe a spark for this Colorado offense well, you second have effort to, you have to like that I don't care look at that I mean he just put his head down he's an excellent guy at reading defenses there there was no reading to do he just found the window finally goes head on to a guy and then pushes him back watch this now there's the open gets over that tackler now there he is Chapman one-on-one and just pulls his way down for the first down you have to like that 95 yards for the game. One guy was able to really run. Not this time, though. No. He's going to lose a couple. Travis Oaks, number 50, in the backfield. You know, Sherrington had over 3,400 career yards in high school. 15 touchdowns in senior year. He was a sleeper as a recruit. The guy can run the football. Coaches have really liked the way he plays and they like the fire that he puts in the offense. They need somebody like that right now to do some. Had a big game a week ago, too, the comeback win over Iowa State. Took a touchdown, the game winner with nine seconds left. Second and 12. Here comes the blitz again. Kelly, he missed him. Hessler had Severini open, but he couldn't hit him. He did, though, avoid the rush. Hessler's frustrated with himself. He stepped up past the rush and then rushed the throw and bounced it out there. Once he got past the rush, watch this. All right, he set, he feels the blitz. Here comes Oak, here comes the safety. Now, he stepped up past that. Now there's no reason to rush. He could go ahead and push off his back foot and get a good throw, but he didn't. And look, he turned and went, oh! Bounced it out there. Short hop in it. Number 78 back up in a white jersey. See him coming over? All right, now he picked up. Here comes Howard. Just can't get there. Can't lock up, square up in front of him, get the hands on him. That's why Thomas was frustrated, because he knows it was his guy, Darren Howard, that ran by him and got the sack. The eighth sack of the year for Howard. He and Kelly lead the team. David Allen back deep. Up from Andy Mitchell. Not a good one, but a take a Kansas State bounce. It's all the way out outside the 45. The first down marker for Colorado was at the 46. So the woes continue. A 22-yard punt. Stuff going all the way around for the Buffalo.
Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change. The Nicoderm CQ Stop Smoking Patch. You bring a commitment, CQ brings the rest. National Car Rental. What are you waiting for? Let's go. And Dean Witter. There are many ways to measure success. Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time. A hill about three miles from here through a very overcast sky. Temperature when we started the game, they told us was at 33 degrees. The wind still about 20. And I don't think it's gotten any warmer. The sun has not been out the entire afternoon. And has been out for the Buffalo. Kansas State taking over first and 10. Eric kicks it. He jumps one tackle ahead to the 47 yard line. Still too early for Colorado to panic. Obviously, they're down 27 and 6, and right now being outplayed. But I mean, you've got 10 and a half minutes to go in the third period. You've got to get a couple defensive stops, try to get some positive things, and build on that. But right now, to be honest, Kansas State just playing so well with so much confidence. They've got that guy right there, AJ Kristoff, a little bit baffled, a little bit frustrated. And your job gets even harder as a defensive coordinator when your club is. Putting the ball on the turf, turning it over. And field position is never in your favor. Eric Hickson puts it away from one and a good run to the 45. And may have a first down for the Wildcats. First half possessions, look at this. It was an even ball game. They traded field goals to start. And then they took a 6-3 lead with that field goal on the third possession. And then the, the floodgates opened. Touchdown, touchdown, punt, and a touchdown. And of course, the three turnovers by Colorado assisted that 14 points off of that. And Michael Bishop really hasn't thrown the ball that often, but when he has, he has been on the mark and uh, they've gone for big plays. Yeah, he was 5 of 10 in the first half. He really didn't have to do too much. The big thing was he didn't have any interceptions. They didn't turn the ball over. Three receivers set. Bishop, straight drop over the middle. Completely has got a tight end. Jared brushed it in, number 82, the senior out of St. Paul, Kansas, on the catch and another first down. You know, the last time we were here for the Texas A&M game, they said Grosskidier was a pro prospect. And when there were some scouts here, they said, guy runs a 4.7, he's got a 3.8 GPA, plays well, big, strong guy. But then Justin Swift took over, became the first teamer. And they say now he is a great pro prospect. That's 6'3", 250, even better than Grosskidier. So the bottom line is both tight ends doing well, contributing heavily, and Bishop looking for him a lot. Right arm of Michael Bishop, collecting both of the tight ends. He's going to throw again. And a lot of time and a lot of wide open space to run. He's dangerous now. Cut it back. Brandon Southward makes the tackle at the 20 yard line. It looked for a moment like Bishop may break that one. You know, you hate to get down on the team. You hate to really criticize a whole lot. But right now, to be honest, Colorado's just catching blocks. They're so concerned about Bishop running. They aren't coming on a full-out rush. I mean, they're catching, they're standing, and they're dancing. They spent a lot of time on the field in the first half. Got to get worn down at some point. Second and three. Play action. Out. Fumbled by Goolsby. And out of bounds. Boy, oh. Colorado, even with a loose ball, can't catch a break. Boy, I've got to tell you, you know what? That is the worst luck right there. The ball was just flirting with the sidelines. The cornerbacks were trying to get over there. Washington got there. He tried to bat it back in, but by that time, it had already touched the line, and they marked it. Okay, Southwood comes over. Watch his left hand, knocks it loose. There goes the football. Now, here comes Washington, 37. Ball's Peter in there. He tries to knock it back in, but the linesman said, nope, already touched the line. They just can't get a break. And... To add further insult, it's the first down. They move the chain. Southwood has been active today, though. Been on a lot of plays. Out of the eye, runs Hickson. Hooks for room. Spins down to about the 13-yard line. Southwood again in on the stop. Southwood very, very active in this defensive series. Trying to get something going defensively. He's an emotional guy. He's a wild-eyed guy. He likes to try to make some tackles when he can. He's been in the last three tackles and actually forced a fumble on the pass play. Yeah, he and Nick Ziegler, the defensive end, the two probably most emotional guys on their defense, and the guys who usually get them going. 
Southwood, as you said, he's a free spirit with long hair and high kicks, sleep deprived of dud. Second and eight, Bishop finds the lane, hit inside the 10 to the nine yard line. Number 90, Aaron Marshall, who brought him to the turf that time. Well, the other thing about Southwood, you know, he suffered from insomnia all season long, and it's, it's a little bit better, but it's not a whole lot better. Because of all the injuries, they needed him to play. Thought about registering at one time. The guy just doesn't sleep. Does not sleep. That's why I say a sleep-deprived stud. I mean, the guy's up walking the halls at night. He loves the game of football, though. So it brings up third and three. Out of his shotgun. Inside give the hit to the end. And gets about three. We'll have to wait to see where they spot it. Southward again. Wrapped him up. I don't think he got it, but if they didn't get it, I bet Snyder goes for it. It's going to be close enough where if they didn't get it, they can go for it here. They bring in their big tight end, Justin Swift. They're going to load up with the heavy package. Go two tight ends. The jumbo, and here comes Bishop. They're going for it on fourth down. They get pissed off. His defense trying to make a stop. Fourth and inches. Ball rest on the seven-yard line. Bishop straight ahead should have had it. He gets pushed back, but he got there on the initial third. And again, it depends on the spot. He only had to get to the six. Well, they're going to measure. Certainly appeared. They got the ball right on the six. That's where he had to go to get the first down. It looks like he's got it. Crowd boo and they didn't like the mark, but he got the first down. And they pull it tight. Oh, yep. just oh. barely. Just barely. Half the football, Max. I got it by 20, two or three inches at least. I told you he had it. He got it with his initial thrust. Look, boom, he's down to the six right here. Yeah, he, he's actually past that mark. All he had to do is get right in here. Yeah, he was he past got there that. Easily. Yeah. Easily. So in any case, it is first and goal at the six-yard line. Wildcats trying to tack on more on Rick Neuheisel and the Buffalo. A couple of pullbacks in there again. Gangwish in motion. Ryan Goolsby, who scored in the first half. Inside the five, hours is way to the four, maybe the three. Defensively now, you've been in this series a long time. They moved the ball down quickly. It's been a very physical series. They've been bringing it at this big offensive line. We told you, one of the biggest in the country, college or pro. So if you're the linebackers now, you may want to gamble a little bit. You may want to try to get in your hole and come hard. You may have to double tight end set, two fullbacks out of the eye. Pinch the corner. Bishop's going to run, but there are flags now. And we'll see if there's movement on the offensive line or if the defensive front was in the neutral zone. Offside, on the defense. Half the distance to go. We play second down. Look at the frustration. By New Hazel, and then you see everybody jump. You know, you got to gamble, you got to guess, and you got to come hard and be aggressive down there. But at the same time, you have to be disciplined. And it's exactly what you said, actually. They were really gambling and trying to come, but you have to have some restraint. You've got second and goal. Just outside the two. And again, there's contact. If someone came across, well, you have to wonder which company was making a move like that. Is that Marshall again? May have been Mau Mau, number 77. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Huh? Still second now. you know it was drawing him. It was making him jump. <laughs> and actually, it may have been against Bishop if he bobbed the head. 
Because you, you saw no movement with the back door on the line. Well, something was bringing it. You saw that before. And then they do it again. Got two tights in there. Tight ends down a little bit from the quarterback. They were jumping and got a little antsy. That could have drawn them. And now Darnell McDonald, Gavin Fareed, the two wideouts in. One tight end. There's the option and the pitch to Hickson. Looking to cut back and slam to the turf right at the five-yard line. I don't know how Bishop got that off. He was wrapped up when he released the ball. It was a low pitch, but Hickson did a great job just to go down and get it. He's the captain of the team. He's a senior. What a great comeback for Eric Hickson. Missed his junior season with a broken leg. Worked hard, diligently stayed in the weight room. And if you haven't done it, people have no idea how difficult it is to rehab and come back from injury. All the work he put in. And now trying to get to pay dirt after this long drive for the Wildcats. Defense has a chance here. Third down and five. Out of the gun. The throw a little bit low to Hitchin. It was behind him. Bishop will be upset with himself. That is a tough defensive series right there down inside the 10-yard line. Especially even after they jumped off sides and they moved it inside the five. They fought, they battled, they pressed, they fought. And they stopped them here for the first three plays. It brings up fourth down and five. And that'll hold them to at least a field goal. Our team Grammatica comes on with a field goal try. It'll be from 22 yards, one of the three finalists for the Grozer Award. Had a 52-yarder in the first half and nails this one. So Kansas State on the board here in the second half. But a good stop and maybe something at least positive to point to for Colorado. Stopping it after a second and goal from the two. Grammatica puts three on the board. now for the Burger King play of the day. Brian Greasy with some trickery here over to Charles Woodson. He looks up field and then back to Brian Greasy and he takes it down to the one yard line setting up Michigan's first touchdown as they're looking to remain unbeaten. They lead Wisconsin 16-10. Terry. All right, John. Still a good one going on there. The sandwich game as you call it. Good one next week as well. The scoring drive third play and they went 50 yards but they were stopped inside the five. Yeah, but the bottom line is Kansas State is pretty daggone good. Only lost to Nebraska. They're being emphatic today, 30-6. There's Ben Kelly. His own two-yard line. Going to bring it out, looking for a couple of blocks. Demetri Denmark with a tackle at the 14-yard line. A good stop by the cornerback. Well, next Saturday, America's biggest road show. Well, it rolls into Ann Arbor this one of the great matchups this season. And Ohio State and John Cooper finally beat Michigan, number four and number two, next Saturday at noon Eastern time here on ABC. The Rose Bowl question get up for grabs. And the rest of the lineup here on ABC next week. Check your local listings for the games in your area. Your cable operator 
for those on pay per view. Our football season winding down and a lot in question still. Pass out complete the first catch of the afternoon for Phil Savoy. We've been wondering where he's been and why Hessler hasn't gone to him. You know, that's a matchup that we, we said at the beginning of the game would be critical. That would be key. I mean, you've got Savoy, who's outstanding, and a big receiver at 6'3", came into the game with 29 receptions, working against the freshman, who's 5'9 and a half. Got more yards in the air this year than any other Colorado receiver, too. And a big play man. This one thrown over the middle. It was hit. And with that, that was Jerome Evans again. That's the third time this afternoon that he's got a hand on a Hessler pass. Well, that was big old Evans, 99. He's going to be right in the middle of your screen. Or 98, rather. Six foot six. Look, can't get through. He's being blocked by Wade, and so he gets his hand up. That's huge. You know what, though? That almost hit him in the armpit. Now, that ball was not well thrown. Well, we said that earlier, that Hessler's got to find the creases and the alleys to throw, and he doesn't do that. Big third downs all game long, but here it comes again, third and two. And they run it this time over the left side. Trotman's got a lane. And across midfield, finally brought down and run out of bounds at the 38-yard line. So on third and two, a huge gain of 39 for Herschel Troutman. Before the game, actually this past week, the coaches said, Troutman's more quick than he is fast, but he's effective. And boy, that flow really exemplified it. He used his quickness to get through the hole, but he's not really overly fast. Look, the quickness gets him by, gets him through, gets him past the line of McCoy, and then he gets tracked down from behind by Chapman. That's a five rusher in Colorado history. Hetzler going deep, double coverage. Chapman almost intercepted it. Nothing open. That ball didn't have a chance. He just let this thing fly. He, you know, I think he was actually throwing it away. But if you're going to do it, you better really let it wing and get it away from the safety. I don't know why he was throwing there anyway. He had double coverage. Chapman has made some big plays this year. And a couple of big ones today, too. Recovering that fumble down at the goal line in the first half. Here they come on the blitz. Get it out. Got a head swing on it. Gets away. But he won't get away from the second tackle. Joe Bob Clements on the sack. They were coming off both corners with a blitz. It was supposed to be a keeper on the corner, and they ran right into the blitz. Here it comes off the corner. Boom. He says, all right, look, I'm in trouble here. Goes back, backside. But they're coming that way as well. Well, you got to like that. I mean, you've got Howard coming one way. You've got Clements coming the other way. You've got the linebackers chasing you down in between. There's Clemens, 46. Clemens, a former walk-off. Third and, and it's 18 now on the run is Hessler again. Incomplete, no chance again. Good job, just unloaded from Keith and Howard and Oaks coming after him hard again. Hey, I want to tell you something now. They're just laying their airs back. I mean, they're just coming and letting it all loose. Now that's the look that's been on Rick Neuheisel's face for much of this year. And Bill Snyder doesn't show much emotion, but you know, he knows this is a good one. We talked to him and his assistant coaches and some of the players. They think that this defense may be as good as that 95 defense. You know, and that 95 defense, which led the nation, Tom Osborne said that that defense was as good as anybody in the country in the last 20 years. They say this was just almost as good. McPeach. Another short kick into the wind. They're trying to keep it low against that wind. And it goes out of bounds. Well, tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern time, 12.30 Central, we've got soccer action coming your way. The U.S. national team battling El Salvador. The U.S., of course, already clinched the berth in the World Cup season in France. El Salvador trying to do the same. Tomorrow at 12.30 Central time right here on ABC.
punt of only 25 yards. And Michael Bishop winning the offense down the And they start outside the 25-yard line. Gives it to Mike Lawrence. Can't find any room on the left side. And brought down right at the line of scrimmage, Ryan Black, number six feet. Strong safety made a stop. You know what's interesting about Michael Bishop? Look at John Hessler, who uh, talked about a frustrated day. He said hit and knock down. It's been a frustrating day. But when you, you, you look at Bishop, when the game is close, we've seen that throughout the year, he wants the ball. He wants to be running the ball, throwing the ball, or doing something. Here the game is 30 to 6. It's a little bit out of control. He's just distributing now. He's become a distributor. Hicks and Lawrence and getting them involved. The Schools here, of course, the big touchdown and the power drive. And again to the fullback, Schools. The up back and across the 30 to the 32. And we saw Hessler a moment ago dejected. On the sideline, Lewis Johnson has a report on him right now. Lewis? That's because New Heisel is all over him. He brought him back to the, to the bench just a moment ago, and he pulled the board out, and he started to draw and talk about what the defense at Kansas State was doing. He told him he's frustrated that he's just not hitting the passes. That's what he wants him to focus on. But after he got all over him, he had to buffer a little bit and told him just to hang in there, and somehow they come back and win this game. So who knows about that? Well, it's a misunderstood relationship and always has been. People see Rick Neuheisel get hard and yell and scream at him, but they admire each other. They like each other. They've been good for each other. Kind of a love hate team. But it has not been a good year. There's a lot of yelling going on. Bishop throws on the run. All the way down to Burnett. He overthrows Everett Burnett, the junior. But Michael Bishop, every week, continues to do things that just amaze you. Now, last week against Kansas, he threw one, his rocketed one, on a dead run off the wrong foot. And that ball just explodes out of his right arm. Phenomenal athlete, I'll tell you that. So James Garcia. And he got a hit by Jerrington. And they throw the play. This one's coming back. It's down at the 17-yard line, and Garcia is still on the turf. That was not pretty. You have to wonder how Charrington didn't block it. You know, Terrence came hard and then looked like he stopped. Watch this. Terrence has the ball. He has it blocked. He's coming out of the left hand. Look, and seems to pull back. Instead of going after the block at that point, it's like, I don't want to hurt him. I don't want to rough him. I don't want a penalty. Look at him. He's, he's actually pulling his hands back. Got alligator arms. He should have just gone for the block. If he was going to go into the guy, block the punt. Then it's all legal. And it looked to me, as you said, like he had the block easily. It looked to me, I thought he was going to block it and then pulled back. <laughs> Penalties, mistakes, turnovers. Story of the day and much of the year for Colorado. The Wildcats keep the ball and they're outside their own 46 yard box. A lot of time and Time is gone now. Bishop hit just as he let it go. Ryan Olson, the senior out of Lakewood, Colorado, made the hit. That is the end of the third quarter. So the third Kansas quarter State. has come to a close. It's at all Kansas State. We're back after this message and a word from our ABC station. What kind of day it's been for Colorado. Here's Sherrington right here coming on on the block. Watch what he does. Rolling, just playing tentatively, stopping, stopping. Oop. And then instead of getting the block on the punt, he gets the flag for the penalty for roughing the kicker. You've got to untie yourself. You've got to be free. You've just got to play football with reckless abandon. And right now, Colorado's not. They're playing tentatively. In, in all ways. You talked about it with Michael Bishop. They're afraid to let him get outside. They're afraid of that containment problem. But even going after the punter. And by the way, we saw James Garcia on the sideline, and he does appear to be okay. Kansas State football as we open up the fourth quarter. Colorado showing blitz. The pitch outside is Lawrence trying to turn the corner. Cut back. Sutter brings him down at the 47-yard line.
great pitch by Bishop, great play. But I want to tell you something. Bishop took a lick. He gets up off the ground looking out of his ear hole. He shakes it off, though, and comes back. He got knocked right on his butt, still got the pitch off, and made the play. And there doesn't seem to be any problem at all with the ankle. He had one earlier in the game, and it's, a, it's an injury that he's dealt with the last four or five weeks. Finally, 100%. Folks, keep in mind, Colorado has not lost to Kansas State since 1984. They're 11-0-1. So Kansas State is hungry. 30-6 is not enough for them. They want to make a statement. Option this way. Bishop going to catch it. Brought down well short of a first down. Let's get an update again from John Saunders in New York. John? Barry, in the ACC, North Carolina against Clemson. Chris Keldorf in at quarterback. Oscar Davenport out for the season. 58 yards to L.C. Stevens. Stevens with three catches for 169 yards to that point. The next play, they get the touchdown and lead 17-10. Terry. All right, John, I didn't think they were going to bring Stevens down at all. Watching that, but North Carolina coming off that short of state loss. This one makes a right angle bounce and out of bounds at the 12-yard line. So a 34-yard punt by Garcia, who's back in after that hit by Charrington. 30 to 6, Wildcat. Well, you have to go back a long time to find a Kansas State win over Colorado. 1984. Guess what? They did it with some offense, but they also did it with defense and special teams. The onside kick, the run back, the interception. Colorado an awful year that year. One in ten. The last sub 500 season for them, but Jim Dickey, a great season for Kansas State. They're trying to do it today. It looks like they will. Bill Snyder has waited for this chance. That's where the throw. Got Marcus Stiggers with a catch at the 23 and close to a first down. He's got the first down to move the chain. And Hessler, for one of the rare times today, stood up and actually threw that like he meant it. I mean, he had a lot of force behind the ball, a lot of velocity on it, and threw it to the spot. That's what Hessler was being told on the sidelines by Newhausen. Just step up and throw it. Stop thinking. Just rely on your athletic ability, and Hessler has plenty of that. Well, you can't go out there and play thinking about your mistakes or thinking about what the coach thinks of your mistakes. You just got to play goes to boy his second catch of the afternoon fights his way up to the 32 yard line that's two in a row that he's planted his foot stepped into it and i mean just whistled the ball he's playing with some resolve now but second and three this time something gets the call so first down then chapman on his back bringing him down at the 41 yard line well, it does get easier when you're in the fourth quarter and you're down 30 to 6. I mean, you've got nothing to lose. So you do just go out there and you throw the football and you make plays. But that's the John Hessler that Colorado fans were used to the last few years. Yeah, and I'm surprised that they haven't been held to six points. That shows you how tough, how strong, and how talented K-State is. This is an offense that's had 38 points over the last four games. The boy with another catch, and he's close to the first down. Well, Thanksgiving weekend here on ABC Sports. One of the old favorites, the Skins game. You'll see more of America's top players, Nigel Woods, Tom Lehman, Mark O'Meara, and defending champion Red Couples, big money riding on every hole in the Skins game. November 29th and 30th, right here on ABC Sports. Always a great show. Talking about being surprised that Colorado's been held to six points. They've averaged 38 points over the last five games with 405 yards of total offense per game. Here they only have the two field goals. The boys' third catch gets them the first down by about an inch. Now remember, at the conclusion of today's game, they will select the Chevrolet, most valuable player of the game from each team. The date Chevrolet has awarded over six and a half million dollars in scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. The first sign of life, at least in the second half, for the Buffalo. Movement on the offensive line to Darren Howard across. He's lined up against Shane Cook. Both of them move. Which one moved first? I'm not sure. We'll see if Howard was in the neutral zone or whether Cook got him there. There's a false start. 
Somebody out there. Still first down. Put that one on Shane Cook. And that's what Rick Neuheisel was trying to say, that the defense can trust the physical belt and draw him out. First down, 15, 46 yard line. Well, a young coach for Colorado experiencing adversity really for the first time this season. But he's been a long shot before, he's dealt with it before. He's a player at UCLA and he's a coach. He's just a coach. This one through the hands of Will Boy inside the 15 yard line. Those two have been battling the entire game. Look at the smile on Savoy because Carter and Savoy have been talking, banging, bumping all day. Watch this. Now, the right hand of Savoy comes out. He's trying to keep Carter off of him. Now he's got the ball, but he can't get his right hand back in. Carter slaps it away. Now watch Carter. He turns and starts talking to him. Those guys have had a battle all day long. He just had a hole of that right arm. You're right. Almost made the one-handed catch. Sheldon Drummond, Damian McIntyre brings him down at the 48. So what was a terrific drive going? Now they missed on the big play. They had the, uh, the movement, which moved them back. So now they find themselves what is going to be third down and forever, a taxi cab ride. Third and about 12 coming up. 49 yard line. Fine line between moving those chains and getting in a situation you don't want to be in against this defense. Here they come. Jack Dell got a lot of space to make up there. It drops down right at midfield. Okay, number seven, John Hessler. Darren Howard, the young, talented sophomore out of Petersburg, Howard. Florida. I'll tell you what, it's fourth down and over 10. I'd still go for it. you got to go for it. You've got 11 24 to play. You've got 30 to 6. What do you have to lose? by Kansas State and it never developed. Presentation of college football brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. Micron Electronics, now you know. All your computing needs are just a phone call away. Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. And Smith Barney, a member of the Travelers Group. Smith Barney, they make money the old fashioned way. They earn it. Ominous clouds quarterback who does a lot of damage. That's what Colorado has faced this afternoon here in Manhattan, Kansas. And it's the Wildcats taking over first and ten after the incomplete pass on fourth down by the Buffalo. Long out movement. Yeah, but see, that one's got to be on Bishop. Bishop started to pull out without the ball and threw the defense across. Good, by Ball start on the offense. Still first down. Take a look at this. Watch your quarterback now. A lot of times they'll bob their head, but this time he's just pulling out. I think he had the wrong snap count. As soon as he started the move, that just triggers the reaction, and everybody comes across. The foul mouth followed him right through. And no one else moves on the offense. Backs him up to first and 15. What a delight Bishop is. Man, we had a great visit with him yesterday, talked with him a great deal. But I, I, I do believe the same thing you do. He just does not believe that he can lose. But he's a winner and believes he'll win every time out. But it's a quiet confidence. It's not an arrogance we're talking to. The inside game of Hickson with a hole. Up front, tough oh, running across the big field. Well, big game for Michigan today and next week. John Saunders, what's going on with the Wolverines? Barry, they may have pushed this one away. Chris Howard, watch the power in his leg. Stops at the one yard line and then just pushes everyone into the end zone. Michigan now leading by 16, looking ahead to Ohio State. Right now, 26 10. Sure. And John may have to win this one to make next week important. That looks like that run we had here by Goolsby earlier. 
sure did, didn't it? Second effort. Another fullback. This time the tailback. It's Simpson goes right into Mike Phillips. Oh, oh, he's he's under a gain of about four, though, and they're maybe a yard, yard and a half short of a first down. Mike Phillips, the senior out of Marrero, Louisiana, just outside of New Orleans, but a four-year starter. One of the guys who's been injured had the shoulder sprain all year long, been battling that. Ty Gregorak came in and, and started as a true freshman, took his spot for at least a game, but you do have to feel for the seniors on this club, uh, looking at a year in which it's the worst year in a while for the Buffalo. Well, see, you had trouble stopping the run against Texas, Texas a and Missouri, and again here today against Kansas State. So third and one, they give it up front to Matt Gainwich, his first carry of the afternoon. He's got a first down. He's led the way a couple of times for Goolsby. You know, the last couple of plays, Kendall Jaycox has gotten the, the key block while they're starting to run. This time he doesn't really knock anybody down. Watch him, though, the center, 74. Watch him, he comes through. There's one block. There's another. He's still in front of the ball carrier. And he's looking for somebody else to hit. Now, the guy's 6'1", 320 pounds. He's the center. He was scoped. Had knee surgery at the beginning of the season. The guy just has fun playing. He's an outstanding player. And right now, he's just leading the way, trying to milk the clock, and let's get out of here. 908 and counting until they get to the locker room. Going to run it again. Hickson wrapped up and caught behind the line of scrimmage. Run down by Nick Ziegler, the junior out of Huntington Beach, California. Lewis Johnson? Hey, guys, let me tell you a quick funny story about Michael Bishop. I talked to KSU coordinator, uh, business coordinator Ron Hudson before the game. He told me that when Bishop came out of the locker room before the, right at the beginning of the game, he saw something fluttering in the air, and he said, what is that, snow? And he said, no, it's not snow, don't worry. The guy from Texas, he's never seen snow. He's never played in a game this cold. But on a serious note, Schneider told us that he is not worried at all about his skills in terms of throwing into this win because he's got such a rocket strong arm. Boy, he does have that. I mean, receivers have had broken fingers and lacerations from the laces. But he's an awfully strong quarterback, awfully good quarterback. One loss in his career. Going to run the option this time. Hit by Ryan Black, though. Ball's loose, but he was down. Ryan Black, the senior out of Phoenix, and one of the two walk-ons who start at the safety position in that secondary for Colorado. He, he had more tackles a year ago than anyone else in the Big 12, 154, and it was more than any defensive back in Colorado history. He was a high school star, came to Colorado, as you mentioned, as a walk-on. He was ready to transfer, won it off the bus. Said, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to get out of here. And just then, the coaches said, hey, we've got a scholarship. Come on back to Boulder. Yeah, I wanted off the plane, literally. Yeah. He had a uh, conversation with Harvey, and uh, he talked to him in the same. Gave him a scholarship and stayed right in Boulder. So it's a timeout taken by the Wildcats. To talk things over, they lead it 30 to 6. Faust era at Notre Dame as Smith Barney remembers one of the great moments, not for Jerry Faust in Notre Dame, but uh, one of the most exciting moments, I guess, in college football. That was a good one. Yeah, I worked that game with Keith Jackson, and uh, it was fun. It was fun back then. Jerry Faust had some tough years, but what a kind man. Bob Davies starting out, finding out what it's all about, all the pressure at the helm for Notre Dame. Now you talk about turnarounds, and Bill Snyder has certainly engineered one of the greatest you're ever going to see here at Kansas State. Phillip is pounded to the turf. Ball is loose. It's picked up and down to the 33-yard line. Ziegler with the hit. Jesse Warren with the recovery. Look out here. Now Temper's starting to play a frustration. Bishop got up from the first hit, started to run down the field. They hit him again. of his teammates trying to protect him. All right, he, the first hit is legal. He doesn't even see the blitz coming from that side. Boom, that's a legal hit, and I mean he was just decked. All right, now the ball starts to get away. Now, he got up and started to chase the ball carrier, 
and took another lift. A lot of frustration coming out from the Colorado side. It looks like Michael Bishop is okay. So this time, it's Kansas State turning the football over. That's been the story, but it's been the story for the Buffalo. Hatchler throws on first down. It was killing the complete. At the 30-yard line, and they finally get a break. Marcus Stiggers on the catch. Yeah, that's great concentration by Stiggers because, as you said, the ball was tipped. It actually became a knuckleball after that point. He stopped, broke down, and waited for it like a catcher waiting for a breaking ball. First break that Colorado has got in a long while. Straight drop. Hessler over the middle. He's got his tailback. Trumpet looks for Rome Danton inside the 15. And down to the 13-yard line before the shot, Carter can wrap him up. It's been all Kansas State this afternoon, but give Colorado some credit now. They're not going to lay down and throw up the white flag. They're still battling. Six forty-five and counting, and now there are some flurries in the air here in Manhattan. Throw inside the five, drop, Stickers can't hold on to it. You know, I thought that was a reception. I thought he ran with it twice, two steps with his, uh, the ball on his fingertips before he lost it. Not sure he ever really had it, though. He may have been bobbling it. Well, let's take a look at it. Let's see. It was close. It was a great catch, or it looked like it was going to be a great catch. Right on his fingertips, he's got it. One, two. Now, never had it. It was when he started to try to tuck it away, uh -huh. and he lost it. Actually caught the back end of the football just to get it. Yeah. Initially, it was a good catch. Snow starts to fall. Yeah, we had some flurries in the first half. Now coming down pretty good. Most of the flurries in the first half, the peanut shells of Tim Grant. But now, actual snow falling here in Manhattan. Partner, you're killing me tonight. <laughs> and Rick Neuheisel wants to talk things over. First real good opportunity in the second half for a score for the Buffalo. Winter is here. Christmas can't be far away. How many shopping days until Christmas? Well, this guy doesn't care. Santa Claus. Oh, what a scene, huh? 637 left in this one. The Buffalo, for the first time in the second half, threatening Hetzler over the middle to the end zone. Caught touchdown, Savoy. And look who it is. Working against Carter, the freshman. They've been battling all day. Carter certainly has won a lot of them. He held him catchless in the first half. But this one goes to Savoy. Fourth touchdown of the year for Phil Savoy, the senior out of Washington, D.C. And they're going to go for two here. 30 to 12, the score at this point. Wayne Charrington has come in for her shell trumpet. On Green to the far side, you've got Marcus Figgers to the near along with Baron Severini. Now three receivers to the near side. Severini in motion. That's what trying to run it in. Five to two gets there. Colorado now three touchdowns and two two-point conversions away from tying this thing. That's a stretch, but it's now six and a half points in six and a half minutes. Six and a half minutes to go. That's a big stretch. It's a stretch, but but if you're Colorado, obviously you got to be thinking that way. Here's the matchup we've been watching all day. They've been bumping, they've been clawing, they've been pushing all day. Now here's the perfect pass. The boy's got it right between the eight and his. Now that ball's well thrown. Uh -huh. And look how he plants that back foot and throws with velocity. I'm really surprised they weren't doing that more. The last two drives, too, Timmy, Hessler has really come out and thrown aggressive passes, as you said. Planted, thrown strikes. Yeah, the drive before that did not work out, but uh, he looked good the last two drives. Well, Monday night here on ABC, meet real people who looked death in the face and made it. Watch the incredible real-life stories on an all-new I Survived the Disaster Monday night on ABC. Check your local listings for the time. And, of course, ABC's NFL Monday Night Football Goes to Miami, the Bills and the Dolphins, an AFC East showdown. Always a good one. Live at 9 Eastern time 
right here on ABC. AFC East still up for grabs. It's yep. been crazy this year. Dan Marino in and out. It looks like, all right, they're going to be in first place, and they drop back out. Dan hurt his ankle, and they put him back in. They win, beat the Jets. Now, Phil Savoy, a big second half after being shut out in the first half. It's starting to snow pretty hard right now. Nothing on the ground as of yet. Oh, but I'd wear a shoe and a sock. Except the bare foot <laughs> of Jason Leslie. Now, you'd think your parents would teach you better than that in the snow to wear some shoes and socks. Now, do you go for an onside kick here, Timmy? Yeah, I definitely would. I mean, you've got six and a half to go. You're two touchdowns and two two-point conversions away. If you don't go for the straight onside, then look for the open area and just try to pooch it there and let your sprinters get it. The onside, here it is. I don't think it even went 10 before Kansas State went up and got the ball. It didn't. It didn't. That was not the kind of onside you like. Boy, it wasn't bouncing. Never had a bad hop. And it wasn't kicked hard, so it was easy to feel. He kind of missed it. He wanted a dribbler that they could chase down right in the middle. It wasn't going to be a bouncer. But he didn't get it all. He wanted to go straight. Instead, he kind of hit it sideways and did not put anything behind it. So it just kind of didn't make it to 10, number one. The only one that could recover it at that point was Kansas State. Number 88, Troy Hackney, a wide receiver out of Hayes and Kansas. Coming up with that football. The Wildcats take over. Michael Bishop still in as is the first team offense. Michael Lawrence is up the right side. And, you know, this is a situation where... Bill Snyder obviously has got to be thrilled with what they've done to this point, but uh, probably hope that he could have put this one away a little earlier. Yeah, and allowed Colorado to make the drive. They sure have played well, I'll tell you yep. that. They've been dominant early and ever since. 6.20 left here in the fourth. Time out on the field. We'll step away as well. <laughs> KSU Stadium, Wagner Field on a cold... Saturday here in Manhattan, Kansas. And the Wildcats have this one in hand. If time permits, remember, stay tuned for the Thrifty Colonel postgame report featuring scores and highlights. Across the 620 left here in the fourth quarter. Second and ten, they give it straight ahead to the fullback Goolsby. That's just inside the 40, almost to the 39. Well, you look at the North Division, Kansas State just behind Nebraska with one loss. That's who they lost to, of course, Colorado at 3-3. Three and three. So Kansas State still very much in line for an Alliance Bowl bid. It depends on what happens with the teams, of course, ahead of them. They're number eight in the country right now. Yeah, no question about that. I know that there are those that say, well, they'll probably go to the Cotton, but they are still in the hunt for an alliance. And that means a lot of money. I mean, we're talking $8.6 billion in each alliance participant. Goes Bishop following his fullback goals. They're going to first down, hops his way inside the 30. Down to the 27. A gain of 13. Well, the fans here earlier throwing out tortillas. They want to go to the Fiesta Bowl. And that certainly is a possibility. Now you look at the Big 12 Bowl bids and the Alliance, of course, part of it, and then the Cotton Holiday and on down the line. Well, the Fiesta Bowl gets the fourth and sixth choice that the Alliance makes, with the first or the final slot reserved for the Big East champion. So they would have a chance there. I mean, you're thinking about Virginia Tech or Syracuse, but K-State could fall into the fourth slot, especially if uh, Arizona State lost uh, or breaks out of a, a four-way tie back then. Right at the line of scrimmage, but he brought about four Buffalo defenders with him. Well, the thing that Kansas State does bring is a lot of people to a bowl. Well, that certainly helps them. They'll bring 40, 50,000 people to a bowl. And you look at the top 10 and what they are doing today. Georgia losing, but other than that, everyone else having won or winning. Going to see, of course, later on ESPN too. And I think if Colorado could somehow beat Nebraska this week, that's a tall order. Because they've got to get one more win to get six. If they were to get that, it's a big upset. 
and they go to the Aloha. We'll see again down to the 20-yard line. That's what they were hoping, man, that they would win today and maybe go to the Aloha Bowl, as you say. Uh, a win over Nebraska, not out of the question, but that's, that's the call. That yeah, is tough, yeah, even at home. So you're looking today at Bill Snyder moving 9-1, 6-1 in the Big 12, number 8 in the nation. They continue to roll. At the end of the 80s, when he came in, Kansas State was 136 and 1 to close out the 80s. He's 63, 37 and 1. An amazing job. Third and two. Mike Warren to his own man, but kept going. And he's got a first down. They'll move the chains again. And even this has been impressive this last drive, Jimmy. The, a different style offense. They keep it on the ground the entire way and using up all this clock. I have to tell you again, I'm just as impressed with Rickett as I was the first time I saw him. This guy is a phenomenal athlete. I mean, he's big, he's strong, he's got great vision, tremendous confidence in a quiet way. He's a terrific leader, has the strongest arm in the country, bar none. The strongest arm in the country. Not necessarily the most accurate. That's where he needs to prove it. But what a great runner, too. How many players, how many quarterbacks in the NFL do you think have a stronger arm? Well, we had some, had some NFL scouts here at the Texas A&M game, and they said he had the strongest game, strongest arm in the country, bar none, on any level. Not just in college football. Wow. Well, he can throw it a long way, and he knows that. He knows he has one of the strongest arms, if not the strongest. He'll tell you. any level, pro college. He will tell you, you're right, and he, and he uses it. Second down and eight. One of the numbers rushing for Michael Bishop. More yards than any quarterback in one season in Kansas State history. Came in with over 400 on the year. He's going to keep it again. And he pitches out of the way. And that the down to the end zone. Focus number 20, Mike Lewis. 14 yards. Lawrence to the end zone on the late pitch. Lawrence is going to get credit for the touchdown, but this play is made by Bishop again. Here, look. Wait to the very last second, and then there's nobody left to take Lawrence. That's because Bishop took it down. He was past the defensive end. He got down toward the defensive back. They had the back commit. Once he committed to Bishop, the late pitch to Lawrence, and there was nobody left to stop it. the light. The party's over. And it may have been over for some time. It was, but if you're on the sideline for Colorado, you're still holding out hope with six and a half minutes left when you pulled within two touchdowns. But now, you can hold out hope no matter who you are. The greatest option right now has got to be saying, are you kidding me? This one is in the books, probably, as you said, has been in the books since halftime. Let's give him credit. John Irvin was the man who just kicked that extra point coming on for it from Medica. Well, it's been an amazing job by Bill Snyder rebuilding this program. And really, he told us the way he did it is a very simple formula. In all honesty, I know it sounds tight, but we have, have just tried to manage our youngsters in ways that uh, we can motivate them to get themselves a little bit better day in and day out. I mean, that's, I know that's old coach talk, but uh, that's, that's really all it has been. And, and I didn't have a perception of what today would be like. Nine years ago, I didn't look down the road to this point and say, you yeah, know, I think we can be here, I think we can be there, I think we can have this accomplished or, or that. I, I really didn't. What's been impressive about this, the way Bill Snyder has done it, is he's done it his way. He doesn't care what anybody thinks about his program. He's doing it his way. And he sure does take care of protecting the kids. There goes Ben Kelly. Brought down at the 36-yard line. Matter of fact, 53 yards from the end zone on the opening kickoff, but not much since then. It's an extracurricular again after the play, and a penalty marker is down. Well, Snyder, 
you, you look at the job, and, and not to overstate it, but let's be honest too. Manhattan, Kansas is not exactly New York City or uh, Chicago or something. It's not easy to recruit here. But he's been able to build a tradition that has attracted kids, attracted a lot of players out of the state of Kansas, and he's made this program into one which is respected throughout the country. Well, he's done it this way. He's done it this year with junior college fans. Yep. Good ball. First and foul. On the return team. The first and ten. This part is fun. Especially if you're at home playing in what is your last home game. Throws on the run. Javoy with a catch. And out to the 37-yard line. The best catch has looked in a long time here in this fourth quarter. Because he's just winging it now. He's just relying on his athletic ability. He's not hesitating. He's not playing tentatively. He's just going. He's pulling the trigger. Making decisions and going with it. Flow freely. Yeah, you learn really through college of athletics being around it and, and also professional sports. Those who are most effective can handle the pressure or don't realize the pressure they're in. Trump that makes the catch. Simino, the tackle. A lot of times those who are not cursed with self-awareness in terms of their surroundings are the ones who relax and just let it rip. They can't be thinking about making mistakes. Well, tomorrow night on ABC, Richard Dreyfuss and Elijah Wood start a brand new version of Oliver Twist on the wonderful world of Disney at 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 Central. Then Martin Sheen, Gail O'Grady, and Lori Loughlin star in an ABC miniseries event, The Deuce's Child, tomorrow night, right here on ABC. I mean, we've been around the country, we've seen the top teams Penn State, Florida State, Michigan, Ohio State are on. After watching Kansas State now for the second time, how good do you think they are? Do they match up with those teams? Well, they do with their size and their quickness, certainly. And with Bishop as their leader, they do. But right now, I still put Florida State and Michigan ahead of everybody. And, and Penn State surprised me. I thought Penn State was in that bunch. And last week, just got shell shot. Really never in that game. No, at home. absolutely not. Yeah. Not even close. And don't forget about Nebraska. They do. Barely won. Well, and, and that's exactly oh, the point I was going to. I was going to let you call the play. But then you look at Nebraska here, and Nebraska smacks Kansas State. Now, a lot of that is psychological. And there are those that say, well, Kansas State never beats Nebraska. And that's true. But the bottom line is they win year in and year out. They're dominant against this team, and they've been dominant against almost everybody except for Missouri. And that's still a miracle. When you get those things happening for you, you know you're destined to be someplace. It may be fate. You're yeah. right. When that starts happening. I think Kansas State would love to get another crack at Nebraska, though. I, I think they've improved all year long. But I think in a bowl, Florida State would still be. Michigan or Nebraska. That's where the throw. Over the middle, he's got a tight end up at the 48-yard line. That's Number 86, Brody Hepburn. Obviously, that couldn't happen the way the bowl structure is. You know, they couldn't meet, but I just think Florida State with its quickness is and it's a young team with 34 freshmen on the line, but they're getting better every week. That's the scary part. Yeah, the defense is getting more dominant, and Busby's been sensational this year. And even when Busby leaves, you got Dan Kendra and Chris Winky and those guys coming back next year. That's for the throw again. Got his man, Chevalier, who's been quiet today, the leading receiver under the 33-yard line. Well, the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game for Colorado, Ryan Sutter, the free safety with 16 tackles on the afternoon, and Michael Bishop from Kansas State, 156 yards in the air and a touchdown, and he ran for 44 yards. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievement and to assist those in financial need in a Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter of a century. Unfortunately, the play that stood out with Sutter was the one where they scored a touchdown, but let me tell you, the guy has a hard nose tough competitor. He averages 15 tackles a game, and he's right up there again. That's where on the wrong 
Dirk Swartis the boy. He's got it inside the cannon. That is vintage John Hessler, and he's going to Savoy. You are absolutely right. This is the John Hessler that Colorado fans used to be used to. Well, he's got the talent. I don't think anybody would dispute that, especially Rick Neuheisel. But it's got to be the six inches between his ears. I mean, somebody has to free that up, just let it go, and rely strictly on his athletic ability. These fans don't want to give up another score. Hessler with all the time in the world to the end zone and overthrows Savoy. Troutman was there too. You know, and, and Rick Newhouse will have to shoulder some of that because as a coach, he's the one that has to free him up up there mentally. And I think sometimes when you're, you're too hard on a certain kind of guy, then they, they can get a little bit tentative to start worrying about mistakes. The best coaches will tell you maybe the, the top priority is knowing your players and what they respond to and what they don't respond to how they react to you as a head coach. Well, this drive right here is showing you what the kid can do. And they come a straight. They're not going to win this, but he desperately wants to put something on the board to prove a point. That's worth to the end zone, jump ball through the hand of number 17, Robert Toler. That ball should have been caught. That was a difficult throw all the way across the field. It was there and went through his hands, as you said. Toler had to go up and get it. It was high, but it was certainly catchable. So 43 seconds left. And the Wildcat doesn't have a coat on. It's chilly up there. He's worried about a coat on. Gosh, he's on the ledge there. That's dangerous. Well, he's got to know what he's doing. He's at home. He doesn't have a safety belt on. That's what I'd be worried about. Forget the coach. It is windy. Third down for Hessler. The play clock running down. He got it off the. Throws it up to Savoy. Hangs on with the end yet. Touchdown Buffaloes. What a catch and what concentration by Phil Savoy. And again, there's Hessler now throwing a touch pass right to the very corner of the end zone. I'm surprised he didn't go to Savoy earlier. Look how he just kind of throws this high, doesn't put a hole on in. Now watch his feet, he only did one foot in. Again, he worked with the pressure. Oh, there's no question he made the catch. That is a great catch. He was in. I don't know what the crowd's yelling about and booing about. Go for two once again. They went for two on the last drive after the touchdown, and Hessler ran it in. 37 to 20 is the score. Hessler this time wants to throw. Severini incomplete. Pushed out, never came in bound. Two point attempt is no good. So Rick Neuheisel's team denied on the two point try. Say, well, they take something to build on, but it's too late in the season. Maybe you look at what might have been throughout yeah. the year. How about this? This drive, he was six for nine, 79 yards. And a three missed. One was catchable, and the other two he threw away. Got on his sunglasses. Right light. The yeah, I mean, it's dark, it's snowing. <laughs> it's 10 degrees. He's got on sunglasses. Looks like he's in Miami. Four banks of light. That's it. Uh, here think, in the stadium. You think he's not banking on the Fiesta Bowl? <laughs> he's ready. He won't even have to change clothes to go to Tempe. Ah, it stops snowing. What the heck? Now, Wagner Field. KSU Stadium, much different atmosphere than we used to be here. They are excited. We talked to a, actually a Kansas State grad last night.
at dinner said during his four years he never saw the Wildcats win a game. Not one. Not one game. How and things he, have changed. He said it was an upset if they were even close. And actually, he was with Colorado fans, fans who made sure he attended because they figured he was a jinx. They wanted him in this stadium. The outside kick again. Colorado may have it. They got it. They got it. 35 seconds left. It's a 17-point game. Look at Rick Neuheisel. He's over there signaling that it's Colorado ball. He's still fighting. So it, Rick Neuheisel's club came into this at five and four. They they go to five and five. They still have one shot I'm left at a bowl there, but it comes four. against Nebraska. You know, I'd go back in Boulder, and my practice, I would make the practices so much fun. Just let these guys bounce around, take the pressure off. Just, forget about the, you know, building this Nebraska thing. I just try to get these guys totally freed up, let them play to the best of their ability, and just roll the dice. That matchup on November 28th in Boulder. 35 seconds left, Hepler. The throw again. Incomplete. Cody Hepner, the tight end, was right at the first down marker. Defending on the line number 35 is Josh Carter. Coming down again, 45 yard line. Famous Colorado trip play. Let him beat. Throw it high. Michigan knows all about it. That's what gonna throw it. Diggers comes back incomplete. Good coverage from the Denmark. Denmark. Who actually thought he was in a field win, but now the flag comes out about 10 minutes later. Hey, that's the latest flag I've seen this year. <laughs> Either that flag was stuck in the pocket of the official. No, the linesman threw it. He came all the way down from midfield down to the 18 and threw the flag. Offensive pass in the field. Marcus Stiggers step for step and actually behind Demetrius Denmark. And Denmark was motioning that way as soon as that ball hit the turf. I'd like to be the side judge. The side judge sits back there right on the play. Doesn't throw a flag. Heisman come down, comes all the way down, runs 40 yards, and drops the flag. So we're down to 24 seconds, just riding this one out. And again, trips to the near side for the Buffalo. We'll see if they throw it up top once again. Rushes down Hetzler this time. Trip stays up. Trying to get to the sideline. Run out of bounds with a flag to boot. No I like this. No give up in this kid no, in this offense. That's exactly right, Kerry. 37 to 20. You got 15 and a half seconds left. And they're battling like it's the second play of the game. So Kansas State's going to go to nine and one. Colorado very disappointing this year. We'll go to five and five with one game left, one shot left at a bowl game, and that's against Nebraska. Not the easiest of assignments. Nebraska scored 63 points in the first half today. Buffalo's with four straight goal wins. The goal opportunity could come to an end. The boy can't reach it. A little bit behind him and underthrown. So 10 seconds left now. I've got to give Carter a lot of credit. He was on Savoy all day. 
we kept saying they weren't throwing to Savoy, but a lot of that could have been Carter. He had good coverage. He was battling all day. The freshman with a lot of confidence plays that corner. It gets awfully lonely out there. You know, that's like being a guy on an island and when you miss an assignment or break down or somebody makes a catch over you, you're spotlighted. He's done a heck of a job today. Played well, didn't he? He Coach Stoop, a lot of credit, too. So they go trips again to the near side. Esper looking over the middle, though. The ball popped, popped out, picked off by Stoop. Tells the tale of Colorado's day and Colorado's season. The story for this Kansas State defense. Simino with the interception to end the game. Well, that's how it is going. 37 to 20, the final score for the first time since 1984. Kansas State beats Colorado. For Tim Brandon, Lewis Johnson, I'm Terry Gannon. and hope you enjoyed it here in Manhattan. Tomorrow here on ABC, soccer action and then figure skating. So long, everybody.